I remember just getting stopped in the street and that people saying Wait. people didn't even know like when he signed for Evan. Like everyone was just I was thinking surely he takes me maybe <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. I don't know like what the fee would have been then, like mm. it would have been quite big, I think, because I was that young and I yeah, just yeah. got man the match in the final. Yeah. I think maybe stock was high and Evan had a good side then, like yeah. like the wingers they had as well. Mm. Like I can understand it, you know what I mean? And <laughs> Alan, welcome, mate. Thank you very much for uh, for joining us. Um what's your earliest football memory of you being with a ball? Um or oh, me with the ball, not yeah. watching. No, well, well he'd, he'd give me either, but I'm just thinking, when were you first kicking a ball about? But is there an earlier memory um, than that of actually watching? I'm not sure. I'd say probably um, my first memory with the ball, I'd say, um, I'd say I, I went to Prescott Leisure Centre um, before before I was with a team or anything like yeah. that. And there was an Everton coach there. Right. Um, and he was taking the session. I was only five was young like yeah and um it was just like five side indoor like yeah. just play for fun whatever yeah yeah and um i remember him going over to speak to me and my dad straight after the first thingy i uh, didn't have a team we didn't have a team we were too young and then he said i think you should take callum to a uh, bellfield really? so that was a five very early on yeah obviously i don't remember actually properly playing but yeah, yeah. i remember him speaking to me and my dad and then from then on, it was like every other, every other night. I was at Belfield at five, six. At five, it was Early, yeah. So yeah. from then on, it was just constantly. That that was it. Up like there with the training. Did you have a team, or did you never? Did you nah, just literally just go straight really, into no. the academy? So I went straight into the academy, yeah. yeah. And that, that that was it. Then I just didn't look back. I loved it. Yeah. To be fair, I think because I was dead shy at the time. I think the first few sessions. I was like, didn't want to join in, so they just like let me watch. <laughs> so <laughs> I was you that young, yeah. yeah. And then after a few sessions, um, I just loved it. I didn't look back yeah. then. My mum and dad, to be fair, were taking me anywhere. There's every night, every night they could, and um, that was it. Then for the next ten, twelve years or something like that, just every night. I felt I was fucking mad. Then I was hooked. But say watching, watching, um. The main one that stands out probably uh, the Michael Owen goal against Argentina. I remember the yeah, World Cup. Yeah, yeah. I think it was a little bit older then, but yeah. I remember watching that. And then my first match was Everton Chelsea. It was three one Everton. They were getting beat one 0 Don't know what year that was, but my dad took me. Yeah, that sticks in your yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'd say they're my earliest memories. They're the ones, the mm. crowd and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. mind doing this one day. Yeah, yeah. Well, so you got you go off to the academy, and obviously, that that builds, doesn't you? You training and playing games, and what was that like then? If you'd never told me, what was that like actually playing when you first started wearing the Everton kit and playing in academy games and stuff? Yeah, um, phew, I loved it. Um, didn't want to do anything else. That was just yeah. that was the dream from then on. Yeah. I was just hooked straight yeah. away. Um, I had all the kits and all that. <laughs> just just loved it, but. Uh, yeah, no, it was just, I just didn't look back then and just wanted, that was the dream, wasn't mm. it, then to make it, so the, I just kept going. When you're in, when you're playing in that academy side, is, uh, you see now, I don't know whether it's changed much or whether it was like this when you were you were in the, as part of an academy, but I've said this before, I watched uh, like Crystal Palace Academy, there's a programme on that and Leeds Academy and all that, and these kids are playing for contracts every year. Yeah. Was it like that for you? Was it like, oh, you've got to go up and see whether you're being retained? And... Um, later on. Was so it? obviously yeah. when I was like five, six, seven, yeah, it's no, just, no. you're just playing for fun, yeah. aren't you? But it, it was a, a lot at the same session. Yeah. Like, I don't know if every other academy was the same, but it was like nearly every night of the week. So like we were getting ahead of everyone because mm. we had the best coaches, the best academy. Yeah. At that time, Everton's academy was very good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we were getting ahead type of thing but um no i think it was just it was just playing for fun if you yeah. enjoyed it i think you could go and train well you could you could go to other teams so some oh, lads okay, were going yeah. to liverpool and everton and united right. um but i i wasn't interested in that i didn't do that um a liverpool tried to get me down there once to be fair uh i went to melwood yeah um my dad and we laugh about it now like but he, i wouldn't put the liverpool kit on i was only about <laughs> six six seven or something and i think i play for I had to put the team on 
the other team shirt on to play against them because I wouldn't put the top on. Like, <laughs> Crocs to country boys or something, I don't know. can't remember the team scored a hat-trick against them. Did you? Yeah, so <laughs> that was like early on. But um, but no, I, I didn't. wasn't really interested. I just stayed at Everton. Yeah. And then I think it was, I think when you're eight or nine, mm. you sign, I think maybe nine, I can't yeah. remember. And then you play, I don't know if it's every year or every two, you get another contract, get a contract and so on. Did yeah. you did you feel pressure as you got a bit older for that? Or as not? I got older, yeah. yeah. I'd say, yeah, I'd say when it got to, it was early, like 13, 14. Yeah. I found that hard at first. Yeah. Because all the other lads were bigger. So I grew later. Mm. So the other lads were like getting ahead of me and they yeah. weren't as good, but they were more developed yeah yeah and everton were big on size right okay so that was putting pressure yeah. on me and they used to say stuff to me on my dad and whatever um but yeah i'd say as it got around that age 13 14 um it got hard and i fell behind a little bit yeah because of size because then, of that yeah, yeah yeah do you think that do you think looking back well certainly the way it's going now do you think there's a, a bit too much pressure put on kids at that age about playing for this concert i understand yeah. Every club's trying to get the best they can and develop yeah. the players. But but how did you feel as a player? Because I think some of these the things I've seen again, just going back to like these programs and all the setup to to look like that. Mm. And I know the percentages of lads who actually make boys who actually get through and make it is tiny. Mm. So there is there's always going to be pressure in that way. But did you feel any pressure personally of like you know I'm, I can't perform because there's too much at stake. And did you feel any pressure from your parents, or did your parents? No, no, they that? never give me any. To be fair, yeah, they were dead laid back. Really, um, they they never pressured me into anything. I think that helped as well, because I know some lads they had the opposite with them, and they sent them the other way. But because I was loving it, I was enjoying it. Um, I just kept going type of thing. But no, I don't think the pressure too much because you need. I think you need to get used to that pressure because when you are actually when you do make it, the pressure's ten twenty times more. So. It was hard, but that's what makes your character, and that's when you sink or swim as well. So then, obviously, later on, when I do get released finally, when I'm 15, mm. which ended up being the best thing for me, but at the time, was devastated. Um, then it was either sink or swim. Luckily, went to Wigan, and um, went to stayed there after a few months, and that's when it, my character came out, and that's when my personality and I started like wanting it more and whatever and that's when I kicked on to be fair so I could have easily went the other way there's a lot of lads you know who were my age and they went the other way and just give up stop playing so yeah so no I don't think the pressure is too much I think it is it's big and it's hard but that's also that made me grow up and learn and that rejection from that age is what made me the player I am today and that's where I get like me bite from and me, me fighting, me tackling and that. Like, I was never like that when I was at Everton. So that came after like because that. I was, like, flat out just doing everything to, to make it. To make it. Do you know what I mean? What, what, I mean, what was, personally, what was that moment for you? Because obviously you're never Sony and you're playing for Everton and, yeah. and your dream will yeah. be to just to play for Everton, wear the kit and all that, play for the yeah. first team. What was that moment yeah, like? No, was, was, it a, was it a, a shock to yeah, you? No, it was big yeah. shock, big yeah. shock. That, I think that's what made it harder. Yeah. Didn't see it coming. Um, I think the few years before, not the year before, or two or three years before, I got a year, player's player, um, two years on the bounce. Nice. So I was playing up and going away with the uh, the older lads and going on tours and abroad and done well. And then that's the season that I got released. I fell behind. Um, I was just, the other lads were more developed and stuff. Mm. But I still thought, they, they always promised me, mum and dad, um, we'll wait for them to grow type of thing. That's what they used to say. Yeah. They were massive on height. I don't know if that's still the case now. Um, but yeah, they, they didn't. So I was bitter about it, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I think I spoke about it with you before. Yeah, I? Yeah. Um, I was very bitter about it, but that's also what made me mm. go the other way. Yeah. Um, but I was devastated, yeah. Didn't see it coming. Um, me and my mum and dad come home, told me. I was gutted. And it took me a few months to get over it, to be yeah. fair. And then, to be fair, um, did, did, did he help me get to Wigan now? I was going to say, was there any aftercare? Yeah, so uh, Martin Waldron and Tosh Farrell, um, yeah. they spoke to Wigan, said get him in. And as soon as I went to Wigan, first training session, I, I realised, like, 
I'm I'm better than these, so I've got something here that I need yeah. to, and it gave me the confidence. Then I, I went from being because of the season I had, because it was behind, just one of I don't know twenty, thirty players to the best player there, yeah. a new straight away, and that gave me the confidence then, and that's when my character starts coming out and everything started changing. Then it was yeah. it was the best thing for me to be yeah. fair, it hundred percent. I don't yeah. know if I would have had the career I've had if. Well, I don't. I don't think it would have ever stayed at Everton. Got a scholarship, so that was. I got released just before the scholarships. Yeah. Um, and then there was players there that got scholarships. There, they even said to me, "My dad, you're better than." But we think this is best for you. They only lasted the scholarship, and then they didn't make it. Yeah. So it just shows you how many people make it. There's so many that 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 don't, and it is hard. But yeah, I'd say that's what it made me yeah. really. Yeah. You go off to Wigan, obviously, and. You, you get in, you're in the reserves quite quickly as well. I was mm. looking back through all the stuff, and you scored a few goals in the reserves. And then, I mean, what what was that like? Because obviously, playing amongst your own level, you're saying you're the best player there. So obviously, going and playing in reserve football, playing against older players, I guess. Mm. What? How did you find that yeah. stepping up? Was it a step up? Will it, will it be more going from? Yeah, it was a step up when I went to. Obviously, when I first went to Wigan, I was with the 16s. Yeah. So I was felt by far the best player. Yeah. But then, obviously, I've got into scholarship at Wigan instead yeah. of Everton. Yeah. And then you're with the lads who are older, so it's two age groups together. Yeah. And then that, that at first was hard because they were like men. Crazy. So I wasn't. So I had to find another way. So that's when I started having to find a way and get more like clever and uh, use my body more and... The, the running at first, I remember thinking, wow, I couldn't believe the running they were doing. Like, I couldn't keep up. So I was only small. It was like, so you need to be fit to make it type of thing. Um, but then I started growing that year and started like growing into a man. And then as soon as I did, by the end of that season, I've ended up breaking through. So, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's what I needed. It is what I needed, mm. definitely. Brilliant, I mean. We live in, we still live in the home, yeah, or it um, be often Yeah, so we still live in the still home. Still yeah. so that's good that yeah, it's so, local yeah. as well, and you yeah. that. I mean, obviously, you know, just reading, you made your first team debut on the twenty fourth of May two thousand and nine against Portsmouth. That oh, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 one 0 Hugo Rodelega. Yeah, what a name! I remember it well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what was that like? What was it like being called up to? Was there any indication yeah. that you were getting close um, before you actually got called? Yeah, up? but I didn't. I didn't know I was going to be getting on that day, so yeah. I, I was still in the. Uh, I was obviously still a very young. Yeah. Um, I was training with the first team. I remember training with the first team early on. I was thinking, this is like, this is wild. <laughs> um, How did you find it? Because obviously you're saying you moved when you went in and played yeah. with the under 18s when you became full time, and uh, it was a big shock at first. What was it like then going? into training with first team players. Yeah, I remember being nervous, like yeah, very yeah. nervous, yeah. I remember being nervous, but um they were brilliant with me to be fair, the lads. Yeah. Um the lads were very good with me. I already knew them because at Wigan it's it's a very small um training ground. So everyone knows everyone, the the eighteens, the deserves, obviously I'd moved up at this point. So yeah. the first team I knew a few of them type of thing. So they did look after me. Um how did you find the quality? That yeah. fit for like was it very good. I yeah. remember thinking, wow, well, I think that season we finished eleventh. Mm. It was high up, especially for Wigan in the Premier League. Mm. Um I remember training very well the week before the Portsmouth game. Right. That just started getting me confident. Um I remember scored a few I scored a few in like five sides. I remember Steve Bruce saying to it might have been his assistant, like, Oh, he looks ready or something like that. I remember yeah. thinking, let's have a chance here the weekend, do you know what I mean? And then the game came and I I didn't know I was going to be on the bench. Never mind, get on. And then obviously my family were there, but there wasn't as many there as there would have been there if we knew. And my mates, I think they were out in town. It was a bank all these <laughs> So there was only like two or three of them there. Yeah. And they would have all been there. But because it, it came like last minute and then I come on the last 20 minutes, I think. It was just like, I remember the atmosphere just thinking, wow. And then went into a 50-50 with... Papa Boo with the off, remember him? Yeah, he's a big lad. Early on, he's a big lad. Flew into him, he put it all on my knee. Did Still he? got a scar now, yeah. Um, oh. Didn't feel it because it was just full of adrenaline, just running around mad. That's all I remember from the game. 
I remember like Sol Campbell playing, I think. Distan played for them as well. Yeah, he yeah. had a good side. Mm. Um, but yeah, we won 1-0. And then that, that's all I remember. But then I thought I cracked it then. So that was the last game before the summer. Yeah. So I've had a great summer, loved it. Um, that manager's gone, Steve Bruce and Martin has just come in. Nice, yeah. And then that summer, I've come back sick. So I come back sick. I like I was a proper sick. I couldn't run. I couldn't do anything pre-season. I missed like the first few weeks. Oh, wow. So I've gone from getting being the youngest ever Wigan player you to playing the Prem. Yeah. And then I was back at the reserves. So we had to do it all again. So then under Martinez, he said he said he's seen me and whatever. But um, well, what was that? What is that like when you? you you're obviously fighting and scrapping and battling to get that opportunity like mm. all the lads are. You get on against Portsmouth, you've obviously yeah. you've shown you're not shy by diving into Papa Booper's yacht. Yeah. Uh, his nickname was the wardrobe, yeah, no, wasn't no, it? No, what yeah. he used to call. He was yeah. a big lad and you win the game and you, you're buzzing with the manager. And then I know you'd have been gutted the week later because we haven't got beaten the FA Cup final, but that will oh, yeah, we'll park, well, yeah. we'll park that. Yeah. But then, obviously... You go away for your break, and the manager has changed. Mm. What's that like for a player? Because you know, you I know what happens in football, and you yeah. have to get your strip. But what that would have been your first like experience? Yeah, of that? I didn't know that happened though, because I was that young. I was just, just I but, didn't even, I didn't know. Like yeah. now, if it happened, I was like, oh, new manager, I've got to prove myself again. Yeah, yeah. I just thought, yeah. right, I'm in the first I'm all team right, now. Anyway, yeah. And I wasn't. I was as soon as I come in first day pre-season. I'd say I was off. But yeah. When I come back when in from being back. sick. Yeah. Um, What's that like when you age. sit? I've always wondered this with, you know, like obviously everyone else's jobs, like yeah. you have to phone into the boss, like, you yeah. know, I'm not coming oh, in. Oh, you today. need to go and see the doc. Not not no, you need to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> the doc will come to your house or you have to go in and see him. And he was like, no, um, you'll have to stay off. So I think I missed the first few weeks. You, yeah. I couldn't get past it. And then um, it set me back massively. And then obviously I'm, I'm, I'm unfit. So I'm behind pre season. They're all ahead, and then um, I'm back to the reserves, dressing room, I'm not in the first team anymore. That was tough. So then I had to prove myself again, and then I had to prove myself to a new manager. Um, it was hard, but as I said, that, that's what builds your character as well and makes yeah. you so coming back from the setbacks. Yeah, um, but I thought I smashed it by getting on, and then it just shows you, you you should never get too high or too low in footy. Obviously, I didn't know that then, but I had to learn, do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I mean, what was it? So it was difficult going back into the reserves, actually. Were you, were you, you're probably too young to have that perspective, maybe, but <clears throat> excuse me, were you cautious about, like, I've got to show the lads that I don't think I'm really big time yeah. now because I've played in the first team, or were you just thinking why am i in here when yeah to I be fair be i was there. dead close with the, the lads like i'm still close with the lads who was in that reserve team yeah now. yeah so no i don't think they looked at me like that because you yeah. know it went like that but um no i just was just thinking how am i gonna get back in the first team yeah. it took me a while to be fair it took quite it took quite long to get back in yeah as soon as i got to a uh, training with the first team i knew that's when i can show that i'm good enough to mm. compete with them it was Almost 18 months before you play for the first team again. Yeah. Not only you've been on the bench a couple of times and you haven't got on, but right, that, yeah. Arsenal in the League Cup. Yeah, that was it. That was a Dave massive turning point. That, that yeah, was a big was turning it? point. Yeah. yeah. Um, we were getting beat 2 0 at the Emirates. Um, I remember being freezing, it was snowing. <laughs> and I've come on and we were just, it just looked like we weren't bothered. The older lads just, not weren't really bothered, but they were just getting 2 0 down Arsenal. and it's done. I just thought I'm gonna smash money when they come on, and I just I smashed Walcott's first few minutes. I remember, and like the left, like the left back position, he was right wing. And he wasn't now. I think it was Nazmi grabbed me by the neck straight away to come on. So made like an impact. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then away. after the game, uh, never forget it. Martinez said, "Oh, you old lad, need to take a look at um at Calamia type of thing. Look at the the character of something he's shown and yeah. the attitude and." Because I was came on straight away and done that type of thing, yeah. and then after that I was I was in, yeah. like that got me in because they were like, yeah, he, he's ready to, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. I know it was only a tackle, but I think it showed but you that I was ready, that I yeah. wasn't bothered who I was playing against, yeah. and then <clears throat> that was it. Then from then on, I wasn't like obviously starting every week, but that got me back in. Yeah, well, that's good. There's no I mean obviously. You just needed that opportunity yeah. to show them that. Definitely. I, mean, I think it could have came a bit early as well, to be fair, but yeah. I think I was ready before that. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. definitely. But yeah. 
as a manager, it's, it's hard and it? especially you're fighting the bottom of the Premier League. Yeah. To, to take a gamble on a young lad, it, it's not easy. So I do understand now. But I bet you at that time yeah, you didn't no, understand. No, you were thinking, no. yeah, I should be playing. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking I should be starting, yeah. Absolutely. You scored your first senior goal against Hull in the FA Cup. January yeah. 2011. Yeah. What was that like? What was it That's like? That's one of my best school? memories, to be fair. Is it? Still now, yeah. Um, yeah, I started up front on my own, which is a bit of a mad one. No. <laughs> that must have been for your height. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I No, I was like coming into like the false nine and all yeah, yeah. mad. I was like, never heard of this. But then he had like. I suppose Roberto didn't need, it. He didn't need the big target man, did he? The way you yeah, because like, we had the ball loads. Yeah. It worked perfectly for me. Yeah. Um, I played really well. Um, main memory of that game is the, the goal. I don't know if you've seen it, but when I scored, all my mates were on the pitch. There's about 10 of them on the pitch. Seeing people run on, didn't obviously yeah. realise. Yeah, they were my mates, yeah. So, <laughs> I, these, my best mate would text me before the game uh, the night before. He said, I'll be behind the goal when you score. I'm coming on the pitch. And I just thought, yeah, right. And then I scored and he was the first on. And then about five, six followed him. So that was mad. Did they get lashed out? Then, yeah, Did so they got they lashed out, yeah. They don't think they got arrested. I don't know yeah. how. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's my main memory from that game. And then we won. And yeah, no, it was, it was brilliant. All my family were there and it was just, it was just mad. I knew then I was, I was good enough then. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I think I fought it anyway, but then you have to do it until you properly believed, do you know what I mean? And I think that's when I believed. Is it that moment of, as you, you're on your journey on your career, is it those moments of validation that you look for personal validation? Doesn't matter, Roberto Martin is telling you, Callum, you, you're great and all that, but for you, because words are easy, aren't they? It's mm. easy for a coach to say, oh, you're brilliant, you're good enough, but yeah. believe in yourself. It's the inner belief for yourself, yeah. isn't it? And you, yeah, yeah. You've obviously sound like the, the the switch flipped when you left Everton yeah. and went to Wigan. Is it those moments then personally that you've got to get over? Like, there's me, I'm in now at the 18s, I'm good enough to play there. Right, I'm in with the yeah, reserves, definitely. I'm in the first team that made me debut, and then the goal was finally. Yeah, yeah right, you actually, can't look too far ahead. You've just got to, as I say, just the next, the next bit. I know it sounds boring, but it's true. And then that's where your confidence comes from. Yeah. Hopefully. And then I think when you start getting the respect of the lads, I think that's the, the, the next bit because right, the yeah. manager's always going to give you confidence and big it up and whatever. Yeah. But I think when you get the respect from the lads, because at the start, sometimes they don't want to give you the ball and don't trust you and don't want to pass to you and whatever. And when they start doing that and then they're looking for you and they're praising you as a young lad, that, that just gave me like, yeah, yeah. all the confidence. Um, and as I say, and then from that game, like, I believed I was good enough to start in the Premier League then. Yeah. And that didn't come for a while, but I was I but believed I was ready, ready. yeah. Just looking through, and you know, the you ended up that season play three Premier League goals, seven appearances in the first team, the one goal against Hull, which yeah. is good. Next season, October, you go on loan to Blackpool. Yeah. So, so I'm just trying to think of your mindset here. So you've 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 got your breakthrough. You've convinced the manager you, you deserve a go. Yeah. With the you know the the Arsenal game and all, and performed again at Hull, mm. and you made it on the pitch with the great memories yeah. and all that. Get to this summer, obviously having made appearances, come back. I think you thinking I'm I'm first team again now. Yeah. What's the conversation like to get you out on loan? Was that like for you? I'm trying to understand whether you think yeah, this is a step back or yeah. yeah that's what I was going to say. Was. Were you disappointed? Or were you like, yeah. oh no, this is the next bit of my journey? Yeah, but yeah. what was that feeling like? No, for I, I remember I didn't want to go. Did you not? No. Um, nothing to do with the club I just I, I thought I was ready I still think I was now but I remember Graham Barrow the assistant manager saying to me I'm very close with he's done helped me a lot in my career I remember him saying to me like he thought I was ready but you're going to have to go to the championship and prove that you're ready like you're not just going to get straight in like the Premier League whatever um, you're going to have to prove to the manager teammates everything it's like I know you're ready but you're going to have to prove in the championship, obviously a very tough league. He was like, you'll enjoy it there. He said, they've got a good manager, uh, play good football, it'll suit you perfect and you'll learn a lot. To be fair, he was right and I did prove myself and I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. I, I enjoyed my time at Blackpool. Um, manager was brilliant, Holloway, funny, mad. And then... He is a character, yeah, isn't he? He is. He is. His story. Have you got any stories Ugh. that you can tell? <laughs> no, probably not. I can't. 
I, I can't remember stories straight away off the yeah. air. Um, my memories he always comes watch. across like brilliant. Like he's memories. a bit, he's a bit mad. And obviously, his voice he was is mad. Yeah, but he's, he's yeah. I remember the first day. The first day, uh, it was a Monday morning, and they got beat on the Saturday. And like obviously, Martinez is not a scream and shout at. And right. like he pulled everyone into the canteen. I hadn't even shook hands with him. None of the lads, nothing. Just sat down in this meeting. Never forget it. And he was screaming at people, coming for people. It went on for about an hour, an hour and a half going on about the game, he wouldn't let it go, his head was gone, and I was thinking, wow, what have I done here, <laughs> panicking, you know what I mean, and then, as soon as we started training, I got to know the lads and that, like, they loved me, and I loved it, it was a very good side, that, and then, I'd done well, um, I'd done well there, and then, 14 he, goals, 14 games, 2 goals, yeah, you scoring, yeah, I was playing most weeks, enjoyed mm. it, loved it, learned a lot, and then he, Martin has brought me back because it was like a youth loan. Now. I don't know if they do them now. Right. So you can call them back whenever. Oh, okay. So I think he just wanted to see if I could handle myself. Yeah. And then the FA Cup game came the third round against Swindon, I think. Not the year we won it, yeah, before that. Before, yeah. And um, he brought me back for that game. And then I was like, like, what's going on here type of thing? Yeah. And then, but I couldn't go back. So I played in that game, scored, but we got knocked out. So I've gone back in for the first team, scored, played very well. But we got knocked out in the third round against Swindon. I think they were League Two at the time. But then I couldn't go back, so I was gutted, so then I was stuck again. Just in limbo. But then I wasn't starting for the first team yeah. either, so I was back to where I was, but I just proved myself. Yeah. Oh, I was mad. So, I, so I, I mean, in them, in them moments, because again, you just said... You, you'd be unsure about the loan, Graham Barrow's convinced you to go, you've gone, mm. you've started smashing it, you're doing well, you're playing, you're scoring, yeah. you're feeling good because you're part of a first team, yeah. and you're getting that regular game, and then you get called back, and you're unsure, you know, we're going back to playing the first team now, and you're playing, yeah. scoring, and you're yeah. back out, I mean, that, how do you cope with that as a footballer then, in that, yeah, no, and, that and a tough. younger footballer, obviously, at the time? Yeah, no, it was hard, but it's, you just got to keep going, you know, you can't cry about it, so <laughs> just carried on, and then, um, so was yes, Roberto we'll giving back. you the Roberto chuckle? We've heard, yeah. <laughs> I've spent some time in this company, what a fella, yeah. But you know, we everything's phenomenal, yeah, and yeah. you know, I remember Aiden McGeady talking about his time yeah. at Everton saying you'd go in angry and he'd do a yeah, Harry Potter no, spell on you and you'd come out, but going. it worked for me, did it? I believed it, so, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. McGeady believed yeah. it. But it, it helped me play better, so right, like, I okay. can't criticise him for it because yeah, yeah. he. No, I just he meant at that time. Feel, so yeah, you're yeah. frustrated, going, I'm gone. I've just been playing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm back, yeah. and, and you've given me a chance. I've scored, so proven it, and I'm back out again. What's yeah. happening? I know it was. It was mad. So I, I think his plan was get me back, yeah. and he'll play me in the FA Cup, okay, and then leave the Premier League team because he'd yeah. have like one side for both because okay. we're fighting relegation. So I think. His plan was that Swindon need to. He's obviously thought bring him back here, perfect first game for him. Try and get an FA Cup run, mm. get as many games as you can. If he proves himself, then Great, we look yeah. at the Premier League team type of thing. And then obviously we got knocked out, <laughs> so we couldn't have went any worse. Even though I played well and have scored, but but yeah, um, the Blackpool loan. I, to be fair, I did. I earned um, me respect then when I done well. Mm. Um, at Blackpool so I think the lads knew I was ready then even yeah. though I wasn't starting straight away I'd slowly getting getting closer and closer yeah I mean next the next season was obviously your breakout season was an unbelievable season mm. 30, 30 appearances 6 goals mm. so you, you're in now you're breaking you know yeah. you broke through the I mean what was that season like then so you've come back obviously You've had the disappointments, mm. the Swindon goal was great, then you've had to wait, and then the next I think season, it still took me till the end still, of that season yeah, to get in. You were in and around it, though, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, getting yeah, on, yeah. on the, in the team, getting on, you know, and I yeah. remember, I remember watching, you played Huddersfield, I know this is later on in the season, you played Huddersfield in the FA Cup. Yeah, the f- was that on live? It was on, yeah, it was. It was on live, because I remember, yeah, I remember watching it, I remember you scoring yeah. in that one, and um, you had a really good game yeah, that was. day, and you set a goal up. It was a Kona, Kona ended up yeah. scoring, set that goal up. Yeah. Was that when you look, I mean, at the time, watching, mm. you looked like you were comfortable yeah. playing in that side anyway, took yeah. your goal. Left foot finish for your goal as well, I remember, yeah. I think. Yeah, it was, yeah. Um, yeah, it was left foot, yeah. So that was that was a mad one as well. So um, I played in the third round 
Yeah. Against Macclesfield, done all right. Won a pen, didn't do nothing special. And then the fourth round came and it was on Sky and obviously it was a championship team. Mm. It was like a lot obviously hard the game. So I thought I might not play it um, because I wasn't properly in. And then they told me that I wasn't playing. So I just switched off. So I just I thought oh, I'm not playing, I'm on the bench, whatever. Yeah. Like, I'll be ready if I've got to come on. But anyway, they got to the meeting at half one and the team goes up and I'm starting. I remember thinking, wow, this must be a mistake. I remember panicking because I wasn't like, I thought I'm not prepared, right, or whatever. Oh, not that he had to do anything different, but yeah, you know, yeah. especially when you're young. So, yeah, I remember being dead nervous then, and then it worked in the end, like, and then done really well. And then, obviously, the, the coaching staff and the manager that took all the credit for it because they, they said they, like, switched me off because I used to get nervous before games, to be fair. Oh, okay. I used to get dead, like, wound up, wound did, up yeah. yeah and, so that was their plan. I don't yeah. know if it did work or not. I think I still would have played well anyway, to be honest. I was confident at that time. But but yeah, obviously that was the fourth round. And then mm. the um, when we got in the dressing room after the game, the draw was for the next round. And then I done an interview after the game saying, saying who, who do you want? And I said, Everton or Goodson. And then I'll see that's what happened. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> we won't go into that. Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> I'm not very well, the quarterfinal for the <laughs> yeah. I remember, I think I might have give you a little bit stiff yeah, celebrating. But, yeah. And at that time, obviously, your yeah. people are starting to pick you out then and go, like, this, this kid's good, Wigan and all mm. that. And yeah, yeah, you come and terrorised Everton at Goodison. I mean, what was personally your journey? You've left being the least. Mm. Obviously, you want to prove something. Yeah. You want to get back and prove something. Yeah. I mean, what a... I guess you've got me too with Evertonians. Oh, yeah, and, loads, yeah. And what was, it so what was that the like then? What was that like going oh. back to, you know, going to play at Goodison against Everton in an FA Cup? And Everton had yeah. a good side, Very David good side, Moyes. Yeah. I'll be honest, we wasn't I was expecting it was the other way. I was thinking, 3-0 today, semi-finals, yeah, here I we come. Think, I don't think we... Shock. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember thinking before the game that we're going to... We we're gonna win, to be honest. I know I was young, so I probably thought different to the other lad, but I knew how hard it'd be because I was obviously an Evertonian. So mm. I, I was, I knew it was gonna be a tough game. You're a bit more fired up for that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I remember being sick before the game. I was that nervous. Oh, yeah, screwing yeah. up. Yeah, and I remember being very nervous about all my mates were there. Loads of them were in the in the Wigan end, um, and then there was loads spread out around the ground and my family and stuff. I knew everyone would be watching it. The pressure on that game was it's on live as well, so, yeah. Um, so yeah, obviously, I was as I said before, I was still bitter then, so yeah. I still had that in me. Yeah. That's where the celebration came from, you know what I mean? But yeah, um, man, it, it worked out well on in the day, and and then I didn't look back then, to be honest. Great through ball me... by Phil Neville, to yeah, you, wasn't it? Was. It? it was a lovely pass. No, it Neville. was. I mean, what was that like when it hit the net at the park end? But, and she obviously, I can yeah. remember the celebration. But, you know, was that just... Oh, that was unbelievable. Get in there. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was that was some day. Redemption. Fair, yeah, it just... I, I just... Because I didn't expect it to happen, you know what I mean? I knew how hard the game was going to be. And then I went off about 10 minutes after that and Baines done my ankle. Mm. Um, and then I went off after half... I think it was like 40 minutes before half time I was off. Mm. Which was a mad one. Three nil up at that time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm watching from the side on, on crutches, but yeah, um, no, it was, it was a great day, and then mm. after the game, we went out with all the lads, and even like Evertonian mates, they were, they were gutted, obviously, but they were made up for me, do yeah. you know what I mean, like, because it was just, it was just mad, like, no one expected it, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was just great memories, yeah. a long time ago now, like, but yeah. Well, I mean, you obviously had that, and it wasn't a flash in the pan, because yeah. you then go to Wembley against Millwall. And you yeah. score at Wembley. I mean, yeah. what was that like playing at Wembley in an FA Cup semi final? Yeah, um, unbelievable. I remember turning up at the stadium, and me me picture was on the side of Wembley. I was just like, "What's going on here? <laughs> this is mad!" Like a massive picture. Like I've still got the picture now, and like I remember just thinking, "Like this, this is me for me. This," and it just gave me the confidence. Did they? And I just knew, I just knew I was gonna smash it. Just I felt like. I was just on, I was just going that way, you know what I mean? Yeah. Nothing could stop me. I felt like, what's the word now? I just felt Invincible like, yeah, at the time. I can't, I can't explain the feeling. I just thought it was going to be like that forever. I just, this is me now. Done. I just knew I was going to 
play well and we were going to win. Um, it was mad. I can't explain the feeling, yeah. but I've never had it since Having that it. few months. Yeah. That few months, the back end of the season, it didn't matter who I was playing and I just knew I was going to get the better of them. And it was an mm. unbelievable feeling, but I could never really get it back as much. I don't know if it's because you're young as well and yeah. coming through, you got that, like, just didn't care. Actually, didn't care who was playing against. I watched them. Um, I don't know whether you've seen it. I watched Wild at his feet, just a little yeah, small yeah, documentary with yeah. Wayne, well, yeah. Wayne Uni for it, I know. Yeah, he was great and domestically. He was unbelievable. You know? yeah. So I think I personally think he's England's best ever player yeah, as a footballer. But he was talking about playing for England, the Euros, and he was yeah. like, "I never ever got that. Yeah, I, love that. I, I never ever got that feeling back. That like yeah. in the zone, the way yeah, he was yeah. at that Euro two thousand and four, yeah. twenty years ago. Now yeah. unbelievable. But he never ever performed that way because of the yeah. youth. And is that what you're saying? Because it was like yeah. almost like your first real journey, yeah. as in. I'm playing well, I'm scoring, everything's going my way, and it it, it just carried you along on yeah, the crest of a wave. Yeah, I can't explain the feeling, it's just I knew I was going to come out on top, it was a mad feeling. It was just like, no matter what I'd done, everything was just coming off. But it's, like, like, it's so hard to keep keep that up, you know mm. what I mean? Like to, to, to do what I did in that few months, Yeah, it was always going to be hard to keep that up for the rest of my career, you know what I mean? And I, yeah. I thought, I just thought, oh, this is, this is it now. <laughs> You know what I mean? Why wouldn't you? Well, no. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Uh, first Premier League goal against Tottenham in yeah. that season as well, April. The uh, two-two draw with Spurs at home. You scored your first Premier League goal. Yeah, that must have been a lovely moment as well to go. Well, yeah. There's another one ticked, ticked off the Defo, list. Oh yeah, I remember being it was a good strike. Um, no, I love that. Um, I think we were two-one up then. I think we conceded later on, which killed it a little bit. But it was still a good point at, against Tottenham. You know what I mean, we were fighting relegation at the time. Um, I had an injection before the game, my ankle after the, the Bane oh, tackle, so I was still struggling with that. So they took me off early, um, like w watching me with that. I'd still feel it when the injection like worn off a little bit. Yeah. I could still feel it, but I got managed to get through it and get a goal. So as I say, I was still on that. Christ. Yeah, like, You're playing well with, and with an injection yeah, as well. Just not in, it was stopping me at that point, yeah. And then obviously, <clears throat> I think it's not too much of a stretch to say, the greatest day in your career, but yeah. Man City FA Cup yeah, final. I mean, it was a, that day, they're probably pretty much like when Everton played in the quarter final. I didn't give Wigan much hope yeah. against City, who had some top, yeah. top I don't players. Think any of us did, I had to and they played, they, to be fair, goalkeeper was absolutely <clears throat> outstanding yeah, was. that day as well, wasn't mm. But you got the man of the match. You, you had a great game. Mm. You had a great game. Missed the chance, I thought you'd scored and oh, the chop back, yeah. yeah, and chop back inside. Yeah, I thought yeah, yeah. I expect that's how well you were playing, just yeah. expected the ball to it, the net. But yeah. I mean, what turning up that day, what was that? Were you, I know you're saying we, we probably didn't realize how much of a chance we had or whatever, yeah. but a lot of your fans thought you had the chance the way you were playing. Yeah. But when you turn up as a young, a young man there playing the yeah. way you are, were you thinking, hmm, beat this yourself personally? Um, or, or what know. was it? Or was it just know. like let's enjoy it? Yeah, was I think it? It was more that you know. I reckon it was more like. Um, so we played them. Um, at we played them at the the Etihad about a month before. Mm. I don't even think I made the bench. Right. Um, and we battered them. We got beat one nil, I think, or two one, and we couldn't believe how well we played. Battered them tactically. Everything. I remember everyone talking about it, like, like the players we're playing against, like, how have we done that, you know what yeah. I mean? And obviously, I wasn't on the bench, but I travelled. And then, so, that gave us a little bit of confidence. So, I, did, I wasn't involved in that game. So, then when the final came, we knew that we had a chance, but it was an outside chance, whatever, but we just, I think we just went with just go and enjoy it type of thing. Yeah. Um, It was a weird one for me. I, I, I kind of... Not knew I was going to play well, but as I say, how, how confident I was at that point. Um, personally, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm up for it. Whatever, um, whatever happens, just play a normal game. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, and then on the day, I think we deserved it on the day, and everything just went right for us as well. To be fair, so yeah, I don't know. It was just one of them, them, them mad days. Like just, just the whole went perfect. Yeah. What I mean, what's it? Probably difficult to put into words, but obviously the you know Ben Watson scores with 
you know, the last the last knockings of the game, doesn't he? Corner come in yeah. and, and it's a great header at the near post and mm. you win the FA Cup. What's that like in the night, you know, after it when you're thinking that's the I know you still this is what I hate about the way the FA Cup's gone now. Yeah. Is that that should have been the end the of the season for you and you should have just been now. and they're doing it again this season. The FA Cup's in the in the middle of May and there's two more Premier League oh, I hate games. That. Ruins it, it, but it did ruin it a bit. That's what I was going to say because you really should have been able to go off, celebrate yeah. that. And, and I know yeah. we'll, we'll come on to the other the, the Arsenal game in a sec, but even so, even with you had the game to prepare, what was that like in the night? You know, you took a minute and thought, yeah. I've been the leash by Everton yeah. and I've worked my way up to being man of the match yeah. in an FA Cup final. I've won the FA Cup, know. you know, you've won more on your own in the last. 11 years than Everton have won in the last you know 29 I don't see that uh, no but that's what I'm saying that's how big a moment yeah, it is though yeah. it's all you know we can you can say oh, I've never got as good as that but that's better no. than a lot of players yeah it is Callum a lot of top, top too players you play yeah. on 800 games in the, the Premier League never win an FA Cup so no, for no, you yeah. no one can take that away from me like I know and, and I do know that but I don't, I don't like being remembered for it as well but I suppose I always will be, you know what I mean? But I just, I don't know, I just think it could have been a lot better, but yeah. Um, I think doing that at that age, I was yeah. only 21, mm. um, it's very hard to keep that up. Of course, yeah. Get any better. Yeah. How does it get much better than that? What's yeah. better? Premier League or Champions League, there's not much better, is there? Mm, yeah. And then that's not going to happen when you're playing. For, it's going to be harder for certain mm. clubs, you know what I mean? And, um, I don't know. Like, obviously, it's great memories, but mm. there's still something that I look back at and um, wish it got turned out better, type yeah. of thing. You know what I mean? But uh, well, this this will probably be something <clears throat> in maybe another ten years. Then that when yeah. you've stopped playing and you've had time to yeah. decompress everything you've achieved in your career and all the games you've played, and yeah. that, you can look back and go, "Oh yeah, still." Oh, you know what? I'm part of history, and, yeah, and, yeah. and it, that was amazing. And I did that, and a lot of like I've just said, a lot of yeah. players. I mean, I've just said. 29 years since yeah. Everton won a trophy. We love think of yeah. all the players who play for Everton who mm. never, never achieved that. You've achieved that, but I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But I hate that. I hate the fact that you weren't able to just go off on holiday oh, yeah, as that, FA Cup was, winners. Yeah, because you've had to prepare for a game at the Emirates. Yeah, no, we didn't even get to enjoy it to be honest. Did you not? No. So it was um, obviously we celebrated on the pitch. Um, we're told we weren't allowed to drink and everything. So we were oh. meant to be in on the Sunday morning. So we're coming back from London the Sunday morning. Okay. So we were meant to train the Sunday morning. Um, I love meant to train, so come uh, on, yeah, tell so me something gosh, different. Yeah. Well, there's, there's no great story, to be fair. We got back on the coach. It was a half-five kick-off. That was another killer. Yeah, really. Like, yeah. What's that about? So after everything, you're back on the coach. It was late because obviously celebrating, yeah. getting out from the stadium. So we didn't get home till about 12 that night. So that's that that's that written off. And then Sunday we were meant to train. Um because we got back that late. It, it, they just said do your own recovery and whatever. Um I remember all the lads in my family and that still celebrating on the Sunday, but I'm thinking, I can't, this is too close to Barcelona on the Tuesday. So we're tra- we're t- in Monday training and travelled back to London. And then you've got to p- prepare to play Arsenal away. Didn't you just stayed in London. Game. I know we probably should have. Um, and gone up, didn't you go on? Didn't you have a couple of beers on that Saturday night? Yeah, Surely you did. Yeah, I did have a few. To I was gonna say, mate, like... you've come on. It, it's, yeah, no one's gonna say it's, it's 11 years ago. No one's gonna, <laughs> surely no, no one's no. gonna have a go at you. Because there'll have been plenty of Wigan yeah. fans who were having a, a, oh, yeah. a beer that night. Oh, there's a picture of me on the on the pitch with like a big bottle of uh, champagne, <laughs> which swigging it. So I think I've been caught anyway. But, <laughs> but no, it was not mad because when yeah. I got home, it was that late. So yeah, it was not mad to be fair. And then I've played on the Tuesday and then we had to win at mm. the Emirates like could have been a harder scenario you know what I mean no. like they had a good side at the time under Wenger and um, yeah I think we took, I think we took the lead or equalised and mm. we were playing alright and that I'd, I've done my ankle that game yeah. that was a big defining moment in my career I'd say yeah that, that injury hadn't you just had you just been called up to England yeah, on the 21 side as well oh. We got called up to the 21s the morning of the... You already game. played for England, hadn't you? 20s, the 20s, hadn't you? 21s are a lot mm. bigger, isn't it? So after the final, they've called me up. 
um, to go to a tournament. I can't remember where it was. Tournament. Was it the Tillon? Tillon tournament? They got yeah. knocked out in the, in the, in the group. They, they, they had a really bad tournament. Don't right. think they, yeah. they didn't do well. They got slated by the press. So um, it might have been a blessing in disguise, to be fair. But, or you might have been a difference. Yeah, so yeah. Could <laughs> yeah, have been, yeah. Um, but, I feel like you're playing yourself down a bit here. Yeah. Just a little bit. But carry on. Yeah, go on. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'd done my ankle there. Yeah. And I was out for months. Um, I think that killed me. Massively, we got relegated. The Martinez has gone to Everton, um, and then was that a shock him leaving for Everton? Um, As an Evertonian, I can say it was a shock that we yeah, we took yeah. him. Yeah, maybe, but obviously, I think I think that, that what he done in the FA Cup has mm. got him the job. Didn't yeah, it? I think definitely. He yeah, showed in the in- interview. I don't know who said it, but mm. with Ken Wright, I think mm. he went through all his tactics and yeah, whatever, yeah. and he was very impressed. I think that's how he got the job. But yeah, um, did you like working under a bet on Martinus? Yeah, I did to be fair. I, I mm. loved that he got the best out of me. Um, mm. To be fair, uh, I think he should have put me in earlier. I think it would have made the difference for us staying up that season. To be honest, but we'll never know. It's all right in hindsight saying it. What is it about him? What what as a player? What you know when you look because you hear obviously you hear lots of different things about managers. But what what would you say? Was he was he difficult to say? He's still playing, so mm. but was he probably the best manager? In terms of that time that you worked under, or would you say, no, no, I've worked under and I, I yeah. was better with different say, managers? Yeah, I'd say he was, to be fair, yeah. So, what was it about him then? Um, what do you think it was about him, or what's just his make big you quality? feel calm, but the way he, the way he bigged you up and give you the confidence to, like, even the stuff that, um, like the way in some of the games, especially the final, he left, he left me up. So, I played like right wing forward. I'd never played there before. Like obviously, it's not much different than right wing. But he said, mm. "I don't come past the halfway line." So he didn't want. He wanted me to, to be defend high, until yeah. the halfway line, okay. and then to keep them guessing. And then when I get it, I'm fresh because yeah. he knew if I was running back chasing cliche all game, yeah. then I'll be knackered and I won't be taking them that way. Yeah. So things like that. So I just thought I didn't know at the time. To be fair, I just thought it was me. Do you know what I mean? So because I'm doing that well, but yeah. then when I've gone on to other managers. And all the clubs I've compared, whatever. And for me, I didn't realise how good he was until it I'm was sorry. gone. Yeah, you had to compare. That's, that's my opinion, yeah. yeah. Obviously, you've just talked about the ankle injury. Um, there was, was that season the, t- the tackle on Hyde yeah, Do you know that you changed, you changed because of legislation after you changed the disciplinary the way they did yeah, disciplinary the, rule, yeah, the, yeah, rule. the rule after yeah. that it wasn't I know. it wasn't the greatest tackle I'll, I'll I'll say it like that I'll, it wasn't it was you probably time tackles better than that yeah. but was that was that adrenaline was that you again showing that no one can intimidate you because of you've you've changed yeah. or was it or did you have a problem with him <laughs> no no it wasn't that I was I was just that I pumped up for the game and yeah. that's how I used to get like and I think that was my first Premier League start yeah. so I'd been coming on for a while mm. but I hadn't started and it was like live on Sky on the Sunday massive game um, and because obviously you're battling you're fighting you're that's the way the I points, played I still play like that now on the like, edge yeah. um, but in the reserves you could get away with a lot more so our team in the reserves was was a bit of a naughty team so everyone okay. was like competitive yeah, yeah. so that's how we played. Yeah. But I'm still convinced my back leg slipped a bit. I'm telling you. Yeah, I, yeah. Obviously, I've gone, to, I've gone to it, it him hard, but fair. Yeah. Like I've not gone to it him that high, and then even after I've done it, I didn't think nothing of it. Mm. It's only half time when John Carver grabs me by the neck, and then Graham Barrow comes over. Oh yeah, it went off like, and then Graham Barrow come over and um, sold him, and then. It was going off at half time before they got into the tunnel. I'm thinking, what's going on here? I didn't think nothing of it. Yeah. Um, as I say, I was still young. I didn't have a clue. I, yeah. I know we got stretched off, but I didn't think nothing of it. Um, and then ugh, I done well in that game. Set the second goal up. I think we drew two two. I thought nothing of it. Yeah. I thought I've played well. Mm. Sound. Got back in the dressing room after the game, and the fellow who saw it out there. Like the player liaison, yeah. Um, Ed, his name is. He come over to me. He was like, don't, don't be 
doing anything on social media don't be going on it don't be don't be uh, tweeting or anything like that or yeah. just anything on social media and he's like you, you're getting really bad stick here i was like am i just like is it that bad and then yeah. when i seen it back i was like Phew. I didn't know that. Do you know what I mean? Does but, it make but, you go? Yeah, it does. But I'm just, I'm just, me, me left leg slips. Right. And it's slippy, and I'm I'm running in full pelt. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I've I've <clears> gone <throat> into the tackle, but then it takes me off the ground, and then yeah. it looks well worse than it is. Yeah. Um, and then after that, like I was getting death threats and everything on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was getting loads of abuse. Um, <sighs> two lads got got nicked for it. Um, two Geordies. Oh my god. Um. But I'm not gonna lie, I, I wasn't bothered one bit. No. I was like, "This is my time now," and that just gave me the confidence again because everyone was talking about me. Like mm. no one knew really who I was, and like I just remember. He did it, after that. Yeah, he did after that, <laughs> and it was an international break after it. So yeah, it went on for ages, showing it on Sky Sports so News all the time. So everyone was talking about it, but like. I've not meant to do it. I was going to like say, is that? Play, like, do you think it is that because you knew that you didn't mean to do it? That it was it, it was sort of a different take on it from you, or were you just was it still that bit of youth and of like I've yeah. done it? You know, we get on with it. Yeah, yeah. like once I knew he wasn't badly hurt, you were okay. I was just it. like that's footy. If he broke his leg or something, yeah, I think I would have been gutted. But they made out that he did, and that's what was pissing okay. me off as well. Yeah, 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 so yeah. they were holding back the. Um, the medical stuff, right, so okay. I get banned. Yeah. So that, yeah, that's yeah. what pissed me off. So I went the other way then. So I was like, all right, sound, because we knew he was like just a, a badly bruised leg. Yeah. Um. So when, but they were holding that information back to the media and whatever because right. they wanted me banned for the semi final. Right. Okay. And then this is where the change of the rule comes yeah. in. And then they would try everything to get me banned, the FA everything, yeah. but the rule was. I can't remember, yeah. was it something to do with the booking or was, uh, got, Yeah, it ran retrospective. Because I got booked, they couldn't got go booked, back to it. They couldn't go back that to was it, it, but obviously it's yeah. So, oh, yeah. There you go. Uh, the injury, obviously, like you just said, bad injury at Arsenal. Roberto Martinez leaves. I'll be honest, as an Evertonian, I thought he'd sign you for Everton. Mm, so I did. did I. I'm going to say, did, did that ever cross your mind? Because obviously, Everton, we didn't really have... It's like Kevin Morales played on the right sometimes. I know he got Delafeo on loan and stuff, but there was also a, a you know, school of thought that he'll defo because he brought Robe Joel Robles with him. He brought Aruna Coney. Alcaraz, Alcaraz well. came. I was flying at the time as well. And so you were absolutely you I were the one gutted. who everyone was saying it'll be Callum McManaman, defo because yeah. it, it got out that you were never thrown mm-hmm. as well. I was like, Yeah, that's a natural a natural sign of forever. Yeah. But, no, I was gutted to be fair. I remember just getting stopped in the street and that and people saying people you? didn't even know like when he signed for heaven like everyone was just i was thinking surely he takes me <laughs> you know what i mean yeah but yeah i don't know like what the fee would have been then like mm. it would have been quite big i think because i was that young and i yeah, just yeah. got man the match in the final yeah. i think like, my stock was high and everyone had a good side then like yeah. like the wingers they had as well mm. like i can understand it you know what i mean and um, but the injury, that yeah. I was out for two, three months. So yeah, that might have scored. Is he well, going to yes. pay that amount of money when I've got that long out as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just um, so yeah. Um, but I, I just kept going and thought, oh, I, I might be able to get back there, and I did want that to happen one day. But obviously, it was never to happen. It got harder and harder the longer you playing the championship. It's yeah. just, just hopefully you can remain. I mean, you played, the, you got back to fitness, 44 appearances that season, four goals. Mm. You got yourself back. I mean, what was what was that like getting back and having to go yeah, back into the championship? Did you find it? That was it? a tough season for me, that. Was it, yeah? yeah. Change of manager and it, the style of play didn't suit me one bit. Um, Were you okay physically after the injury? So no, you... that, it took me a because of missed pre-season. Yeah. That's another thing. It took me months to get fit. Did and they? then when I got fit, I was getting little niggles and then I was in and out the team. Like even though I played forty four times, a lot mm. of them will probably be off the bench. So true, yeah. Um, I couldn't get going. Um, the 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 manager Owen Coyle, so I went from Martinez to Owen Coyle. It was a big difference, to be honest. Just by style of play, everything yeah. for me, I just didn't really work out. But mm. then, uh, Yui Rosler come in, German manager, mm. about six months into that season. 
he got me very fit like he was mad like those oh, ones yeah. he had us doing Pff, never seen anything like it he was a mad fella but he liked me but we had like a hate love relationship like <laughs> we'd argue and stuff which i never i'd never done because yeah. i just quite quiet you know what i mean but he'd like he'd test you every day he'd come oh, for you yeah. and train in front of the lads and that even the older lads never seen nothing like it didn't know it wasn't always, it didn't always go down well to be honest but no he, he, he got me into form late on mm. the season we ended up nicking in the playoffs we went from nearly going down to nicking in the playoffs yeah should have went up that year that's with that squad yeah. i think if we had him from the start you'd have gone martin as we were doing sick back up definitely. even even with what was going on even with them challenging you you still think he'd have took you off yeah i think they just get people on the edge did he yeah it, i think he, he's, he was a good manager him tactically mm. and whatever but i don't think his uh, man manager and people skills wasn't very good so no. i don't think he could do that for years but to come in and get and an impact burst, he was yeah. brilliant so yeah. we went from nearly getting relegated coil <laughs> went and then he come in and just took us right up the league yeah. we went on this mad run nicked in the playoffs and then we were unlucky not to go up that year um so yeah it was it was a mad season to be honest yeah. next season i was just looking fat you'd had five goals in 23 games so started well and then i moved to west Brom's albion yeah. in the january transfer window yeah how did that come about just because you were you obviously were um, playing well you got five goals before christmas doing okay yeah, was started the season very well yeah that, that was to do with that manager to be fair because yeah, yeah. he got me fit like yeah. very fit um so i was flying i'd never been that fit before mm. i think i got five in the first five did um you? from the wing yeah so i was flying that to be fair i was never really a big goal scorer so that was mm. like that was massive so i thought carried this on now and I knew there was interest um and then we were just he lost the dressing room basically because it's the way he was he was a bit mad type of thing um <laughs> and he ended up getting getting the sack and um a new manager come in they got to January we were struggling and then I heard West Brom were interested and we were struggling in the championship West mm. Brom were like mid-table in the Prem yeah and we needed the money so it ended up happening yeah, but I still didn't want to leave Wigan, to be honest. I loved Did it not? there. No, not really. I didn't, no. to be honest. I didn't want to leave. I loved it there, like just a proper family club. Mm. Um, and I didn't want to go, but I knew for my career I had to. But then yeah. I also knew that manager that was signing for what probably wasn't the best for me. But okay. I still thought playing the Premier League should give it your best shot type of thing. So, yeah. Yeah, it was... Um, probably the worst thing for my career i could have done but it's easy in hindsight you can't i mean it's, it's not many people turn down offers to go to the premier league exactly, that's yeah. where you want to play and you've yeah. you work so hard to get and the club needed the money that they so. need the money you pressures on we know that we're yeah. seeing it now we're seeing it now aren't yeah. we? you know we had the conversation before we started recording about psr and, yeah, and clubs yeah. who need the money it. exactly and you know we, we can talk about that a bit you go off to you know, Tony Pulis, I mean, mm. I've never met him. I've seen lots of people talk about him. I've seen varying reviews about him. I didn't like him at Stoke, I won't lie, mm. <laughs> the way Stoke were, but how, how did you find him? Um, so I knew I was taking a risk by going, because okay. obviously the style is completely different, mm. but I thought, like, I'm a fighter, like, I'll yeah. find a way to everything. I start, started all right, to be fair. I think I signed in the January. Big club, West Brom. Yeah. You know, well supported club, aren't they? Yeah. Um, and I was obviously excited by that point. And then I think I started coming on. Oh, no, I started the first game straight in. I did signed on the Wednesday or Thursday. And I started straight away against Spurs. And I was sick. Like, proper sick. Like I was saying, I, I, like this, I shouldn't be playing here. Yeah. I ended up playing. Don't know how we got through the game and played up to 60 minutes and shouldn't have played to be honest. We got, we got battered, I think it was 3 0, so that was yeah. a bad start. But then I started, I think I started coming on then and doing well, and it, it was all seemed all right, you know what yeah. I mean? It, yeah, it, yeah. I was getting on okay with him, whatever. And then that season finishes, we had a decent season, uh, come back for pre season, we're in Austria, the hardest thing I've ever done. Wow. Yeah, the, than running up, yeah, yeah. Worse, running up mountains five o'clock in the morning 16 times you had to do it every day 16 16 times the mountain was like never seen nothing like it it was that steep you could only like go slow 
So we'd do that every morning at five o'clock. Um, and then you'd bike it the next day. You'd do that for a week. Oh, it was God. the hardest thing I've ever done. Was it? Yeah. Spewing up after every run. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> got through that. Started the season. Um, well, from Chelsea, it was on Sky. Um, done well. Um, I think it was Pedro's first game, remember him for Chelsea? Yeah. He scored. Nothing they ended up beating us 3 2. But I got two assists and <clears> played really well. I reckon I played better than him. Probably should have got man the match anyway. But it was his first. Thingy, he scored he really well. so he's got it anyway played really well so I thought I'm here now and like, mm. I loved the um, the ground the, yeah, the whole phone so I loved it the atmosphere everything the fans are brilliant yeah. so that game I remember thinking like, this is Chelsea like they had a good side there yeah. that was my best game for West Brom and then phew, it was a mad one so he took me out for the game after and I was like wow couldn't believe it so I was feeling did he tell that. you why? Um, oh, I can't remember him even pulling me to tell me. Anyway, I didn't, so carried yeah. on. And then, sorry, I don't know if he told me after that to sweep me up that you'll be playing against Everton. So we were we were playing Everton a few weeks later, okay, yeah. around that time. And then he's told me I'm going to be play, starting against Everton, and mm. he knew I was like a massive Evertonian. Yeah. So I was obviously made up, told everyone whatever, which to be honest doesn't usually happen. Nice, yeah. You don't usually get the call like that early, which I should have known then. It was a bit dodgy. So then that Everton game comes and I wasn't starting. So obviously my head's gone here. Yeah. Mm. And then um, he doesn't bring me on. The 2-0 the up, remember the game? Yeah. The 2-0 up, I'm thinking I'm not getting on here because he's obviously defending. He's happy with it, yeah. And then obviously <laughs> Everton come back and gets the 2-2, two, 3-2. Two, two, and I think it was last sub. It's between me and Ricky Lambert. I'll never forget it. And he, he picked uh, Ricky to go on, obviously, probably more chance of scoring, to be fair, Ricky, he's a great player. Mm-hmm. Anyway, but by not putting me on as well, so my head's gone at this point, it, yeah. like, gone, especially against Evan, all yeah. my mates are there, they're all, they're all there in the, in, the, in the box upstairs, like I've sorted them out and whatever, and it just couldn't have been a worse day. No. And then Evan have come back and won. After the game, I've got off straight away, never seen any of my mates, my Didn't family, you know? head gone, yeah, just drove home. Um, gone in the next day or on the day after whatever the day we were in and then had a few words and I was just saying about the Chelsea game because that was like two weeks before yeah. or not long before and he seemed to think that well, they didn't play that well type of thing so I was just like baffled like live on Sky like I've got the, still got the clips there if you want to yeah, watch them I, mean. I don't yeah. know if he's just saying to warm me up I don't know but we ended up clashing we never had made it, but just words just didn't go down well. Yeah, yeah. Um, just got bad vibes from it, and then from from then on, that was it really. Was they broken? Then? Yeah, yeah, it was. It just I ended up just being like a cop was coming on off the bench every now and then when they needed something, but not like first choice. It slowly fizzled out. Obviously, he wanted me to go then, <clears throat> um, which is fine. But then it just got it just got awkward. You know what I mean? And it just went on. The longer it went on, the longer you don't play the harder it is that someone is going to want you yeah so then i went two years we went 18 months or two years a year to not to not playing and then obviously clubs are thinking it's hard to take a What's gamble on someone on who's here? not played for so long you know what i mean mm-hmm. so yeah that that set my career back massively it took me a while to recover from that it's frustrating isn't it because you're on an upward trajectory and obviously yeah. things outside your control mm-hmm. the, the injury and martin is moving and and all yeah. that and then you go to a back in the Premier League and you think yeah. that'll be all right and you do well and the manager sees differently. Uh you had a loan at Sheffield Wednesday for twelve games and then you went off to Sunderland on yeah. a two and a half year deal. What was that? I mean they're two yeah. big clubs, yeah, aren't they? Yeah. 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 No, they are massive clubs, yeah. The fan base <clears> is brilliant. The Chef Web one. Um that was a good side that as well. They uh, got beaten in the playoff final in the end. They already had the they already had the team set because they mm. were doing well. Um, but yeah, no, I, I did enjoy it. Like the atmosphere there is brilliant. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed it, even though I was only like a, a part player because I come in Jan and they already yeah. had the team. I enjoyed it. That that squad was a very good squad. He should have went off. Should have got promoted. Got beaten in the final by Huddersfield the year they went off. Oh, the penalty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So then yeah, I've come back and then I've gone to Sunderland. I was buzzing to go there. I've yeah, yeah. that's a a proper move, you know what I mean? Yeah, I was yeah, dead yeah. excited about that, and then phew, I just 
got even harder because it was just they were in the club was in a bad place at the time. Mm. You could just feel it. Who was the manager when you had um, We had three in one year. Um, Chris Coleman was one of them. Oh, Coleman. Yeah. Were you on the documentary? I'm on the staff. You're on yeah. the staff, gonna say, yeah. yeah I'm on the staff, yeah, but yeah, yeah. that's another thing. I hated that. I was hiding, hiding from that every day. There's cameras on the floor and that, and listen to everything. I hated it. So we used to go Couldn't around and turn them all off. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So with Wrexham are watching, you're not interested. No, no. <laughs> not for me. I just think. Have you watched any of the Wrexham, though? I watched a little bit, to be yeah. fair, but. Yeah, I watched a little bit. I watched a bit, bit of the Sun one. Yeah. I'm not on it. I, I thought I'm on at the start, but it's like. Do you not, not want? Would not, you not want to be part of something not like not that? Not really. No. Uh, I, do you think? I just, you just, it just looks back with bad memories because it's a shame because it's a great club as well. Yeah. The fan base is brilliant, and I think everything that was going on behind the scenes and that, I think it, it was just too much. And then the the cameras and that just didn't help. Like, you've just got beat in the walk and I'm cameras in your face asking you stuff at the training ground. Like, no one had ever had that before. Like, no one had heard of it. Like, someone would be the first to do it, ain't mm. And, like, the lads hated it. The Did staff you? hated it. The manager hated it. But it was already agreed. It's a tough one, isn't it? Because as fans, we love it. Because mm. it's an insight, insight that you yeah, don't and I understand see. That, the yeah, inner sanctums, basically. And, obviously, um, you know, they are... You love all of that other stuff around football, which is great and seeing, yeah. you know, the training and hearing people. But I imagine it is also really difficult to cope with because it's yeah. especially scouts. So we get, we get, we spit the dummy out if we lose a game or something, yeah. don't we? And, you yeah, know, someone's God. trying to get you. Yeah. And, and like, when you look back on it's great, but at mm. the time, I imagine you're thinking, yeah. Do you think it? I think if you're winning, so like City do yeah, it now. Yeah, of course, it's sounds, great. But, but that at Sunderland, that was like real football. That was like how hard it is. Like it's not just easy. Do you know well, what that mean? documentary, like, it was chaos. I mean, you know, Sunderland are a great club, fantastic yeah. club, and, and a big club. And should sad be. to watch that. It, it is. It is but sad it's chaos. I felt chaos good watching that. it, but I don't know. The club was just a mess at the time, and like, don't get me wrong, the lads, we all could have done better, hundred mm. percent, but. It just didn't work out. It was it was a, it was a very tough season. Um, you did have a good memory. You equalised in the ninety six minutes against Middlesbrough yeah. in a three three draw. Yeah. That would have been a nice moment. Oh yeah, it was. I celebrated in front of Pulis as well, and <laughs> tried to come for me in the uh, in the tunnel after the game. He? Yeah, so that was funny. Just to keep your relationship yeah, going. Yeah. So you one thing that. I will say about Tony Pugh, he's got the whitest trainees ever. I am yeah. convinced, I've said this before, convinced he has like some baby wipes in his pocket and he just keeps cleaning yeah. them because, you know, and a cap. What a I cap. will say about him, I did learn um, bits from him as well. To be fair, defensively, he made me, a, mm. like, he did help me a lot. Uh, as in, like, I looked at stuff differently. Do you know what I mean? He was the opposite to, you say, your Martin, do you know what I mean? Yeah. The stuff that he did. He defensively, he was so organised. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't enjoyable to play in. No, but, but he got results. Yeah. You can't take that away from him, even though like, we didn't get on and whatever. It didn't work out. For whatever reason, defensively, he was very good. And mm. I still, to this day, there's, there's stuff that I, I learned from playing under him that I'll that take into my game not. now. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, um, I enjoyed that, that goal. That was a. Uh, I hadn't scored for, I think it was a few years as well, I went through a yeah. bad, bad time, but yeah. obviously two of them years he hadn't played. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was tough to come back from, but yeah, that it was all worthwhile for that moment. What, uh, sure. So what happened in the tunnel then? Um, I can't say too much, but... <laughs> it got uh, lively. How he was waiting for me, like, he, he, was, was, he? he was game, to be fair, yeah. Was he, uh, yeah? Yeah. I was just laughing at him, to be fair, but the, the, the other lads got in the way, and he was fuming, because it was a set piece as well. So I, I reminded him of that because that was really so yeah. But it was a uh, just a gentle reminder. Yeah, no, yeah. it was funny to be fair. It is what it is, isn't it? It's football, like it's just, emotional, it's mate. Now, isn't yeah, it? that's what yeah. it is. I'm sure, he'll he'll give you a secret to his white training if you last them nicely. Uh, Twenty six times for Sunderland that one goal. Yeah, like you just said, it was yeah, a bit a of a chaotic season, yeah. time. Uh, back to Wigan, twenty eighteen. Yeah. So what happened? So obviously Sunderland is there's madness going on at Sunderland yeah. for them. Sad for them. The call to go back to Wigan. Yeah. Back to where you never really wanted to leave. I know. Was that an yeah. easy decision to go back or on that occasion or was it a Yeah, it was, but 
in hindsight again, the I wrong think shoot. he should have stayed. I had two years at Sunderland. I think they got beaten in the playoff final that year. Mm. I think I would have been the difference and I could have helped them get up. I was flying in pre-season. The manager said at the time in an interview, I was our best player. He, he wanted me to stay. He was desperate for me to stay. And I, because of my connection with Wigan, I was desperate to go back. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to go back home. And, Probably should have, well, I should have stayed in hindsight. I was I would jump in to get back a week and I would have done anything to go back. Would you? Yeah. Um, ended up signing a one year. Should have like, held out for more. I was just, yeah. was just too desperate to get back. And that didn't work out either. As I say, I was still recovering from not playing for so long, I reckon, at West Brom. It affected me more than I thought. It took me years to get going again. Um, but yeah. What is it with that? Is it game? Is it? Is it game fitness that you struck? Because obviously you must have been fit. You're training yeah. every day for your body. Yeah. Just a norm, against a normal person yeah. who's been, you know, you're probably super fit. Yeah. But obviously you were talking before about like the level you've got to get to yeah. to play in. A, a, you need know. games, don't you? And so is it, match fitness is it the is match fitness? Different. And without that, and when you're in and out and you're not playing, but even mentally, because I'd been, I'd gone from, say, what I'd done when I was 21, and then slowly just started coming down i found it so hard to get back because i'm like i'm better than this and then i'm not playing for this club I'm not playing for this club yeah it affected me mentally i, I was gonna say but you know i was gonna talk about the mental health <clears> in a bit, but what well, i know will i will come back to that but at that time how did you cope with that mentally? yeah no i wasn't like depressed or nothing just yeah. like i didn't even know it was affecting me but i think well i know it must have been yeah. so like as in the fact that I couldn't get my head around the fact that I'd done that when I was 21 and then now say I'm 25, 26 and I'm not playing for this club and I'm not doing it for this club. Nice, like, yeah. why, why not? Yeah. Like, but I was looking at myself. I'm very critical of myself, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I just had to keep working hard and I knew I'd get back, but it was it was hard. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think um, after the one with Wigan, I, I think in hindsight, I should have stayed at Sunderland. Sunderland. But because it was the season before, it was just it couldn't have been any worse for the club, the players, the fans, everything. And it was so sad. But obviously, I was buzzing to go back to Wigan. Mm -hmm. But I knew quite early on that I wasn't going to be playing, which did you found really hard. Really so you're hard. Fat, that is mad. Again, when you look on it from the outside, <clears throat> you see a club sign a player, and then mm -hmm. you. That player all of a sudden just isn't even, you know. Yeah. You'd think when, you think when clubs are signing these players, they're always looking and think, yeah, he's, well, he should really only be signing players you think he's going to play, going to play in your first team. And then mm. you get there and how did you know you weren't going to be playing early um, on? Then? I knew very soon. I'm talking the second game of the season. Really? Yeah. Um, so who's the manager? Who's uh, Paul Cook. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, cookie signed me. Mm. I got on with him. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, no, no issues. But they just got promoted from League One. They yeah. had a very good season. He had his team set, certain formation. They played the certain way. Um, uh, they won the first game, and then he put me in for the second game at Villa Park. Um, and Grealish was on the left, and I was on the right, and he was on fire. Like he was unbelievable. Getting was in he? the pocket, he was a joke. I remember that day. I remember telling me mates after the game, Everton need to get him. Yeah. What a player. This is before he smashed yeah, it, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And then um after I got took off, I think early like fifty five, and I remember being knackered, just chasing shadows. And um, I knew from that moment, like because the certain style he had it um I just didn't I hadn't I hadn't got it yet because it was still very soon. Okay. But all the other lads are telling me he he likes to keep the same. Do you know what I mean? The same. And yeah, to be fair, he's a, player, he's a good manager. Like, work mm -hmm. for him, you know what I mean? So I knew, I knew after that game, like, I wasn't, it was going to be hard to get back in because he had this, like, the set team and yeah. there's a few injuries. So I don't get me wrong, I was coming on every game. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't say I had to just do wanted. that. But um, that season was still better than the last few. Okay. So I wasn't like, and I was living at home. Yeah. It was a great group of lads. So it wasn't all doom and gloom, do you yeah. know what I mean? But, just I personal just frustration. Yeah. But um, that game killed me, and I knew yeah. it did. Um, I, I, I said to him when we had a conversation, like, I don't feel like you trust me type of thing. And, uh, and he took it on board, to be fair. Like, I got on with him. We, we never had yeah, any yeah. arguments, never fell out. 
and uh, it's just football in it and then I ended up going somewhere else at the end of that year so it was like a year somewhere a year somewhere that's it yeah I mean that's that's obviously so difficult isn't it yeah. you move off to Luton I spoke to you when you were at Luton I think that was when we had that conversation oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in, in lockdown COVID. Yeah, COVID, yeah. Yeah. yeah you were having to train but they already you know. signed then or was yeah like, yeah, yeah. Like, it was that was like so I think I spoke to you in about it's probably like the April or the May mm. and you just, you just didn't know what well, you would have training on your own and going, yeah, yeah, yeah I wanted yeah. to do sessions on Zoom and this, yeah, that, yeah, and the other. I remember that now, it's yeah, yeah, it was a bit mad. It's been that long. That's how long yeah, you've yeah. been. Yeah, I'll come in. That's how long I've been trying oh, to get yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I remember around. you saying, yeah. Yeah. Come in there. Um, 26 appearances, four goals from yeah. Luton. How did you find that? Yeah, I loved it, you know. I loved Luton. Did you? Yeah, I loved it. Um, obviously, I signed under Graham Jones mm. and we had it. Um, Wigan started the season very well. Um, we were probably one of the worst teams in the league. Like we obviously Luton had come from the conference, yeah. Up, yeah, so yeah. obviously the wage bill was the lowest. So our aim was just to stay up. Mm. Um, but I loved it. I'd uh, done well. Um, in and out, but done well. I loved it. The, the, the proper club. To be fair, the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. The, I loved playing at yeah, kind of Road. Yeah. It just suited me perfect. Um, fans that on yeah, top of you it, yeah, yeah it was a tough place to go yeah. um, we pulled off some big shocks that season and um, I got a few important goals and I had a good relationship with the fans I think the fans liked me there and I, I loved it like I, I didn't want to leave Luton to be honest no no. so when Covid came about the end yeah. of the season I think we were like five points adrift before the, like the eight week break or yeah. how long it was I can't remember there was eight games left afterwards or something and we were five adrift six adrift everyone written us off you know what I mean and then they, they changed the manager Graham Jones mm. uh, to the other Jones and he didn't I didn't know him so now I'm thinking oh, well I'm not going to be playing now you know what I mean obviously he's brought me in so I knew I wasn't going to be playing oh, then man. anyway I ended up getting on well with him mm. done well in training and uh, he brought me on for one of the last games of the season scored the equaliser against Preston ended up being a massive point yeah. we won the last game of the season stayed up um, like, like, like the great escape season like great it was boss and uh, we ended up staying up last day of the season I think it was so yeah. um, I wanted to stay after that to be honest but the club said um, they're going to go a separate way so that was another adventure so oh, then I had, I had another uh, adventure after that so yeah it was uh, a bit mad yeah so you leave Luton and you end up going out to Australia. Yeah. I mean, crazy. How does this come about? You signed it to October, was it, of 2020? So obviously yeah. everything was delayed, wasn't it, because of COVID? So, because you remember the Premier League season only started in yeah. September 2020. They had three yeah. weeks break. They come back. They were off for three weeks for pre season yeah. and then back again. And it, yeah. it was a bit of a mad one. So, you were yeah. go off to Australia. So, how did that come about? Um, so, when. Luton said they weren't going to offer me anything. Mm. I kind of seen it coming with the new manager. He, yeah. had, his own, he had his own players. You know right. I mean? He brought them up before and he'd come back, you see. So he okay. had his, his yeah. own players. So, But to be fair, he, he, he pulled me and done it the right way, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I got on with him. We've seen him now, cheek his hand. Yeah. It was no bad term. So I spoke to my agent after that and I was just like, like I want to say something different. I'm bored. Did just you? Fighting relegation. So I'd been fighting relegation for nearly every season, bar one at this point yeah. so I'm like getting a bit jaded yeah I just wanted something different you know what I mean yeah, yeah. Um, and then he was like alright I'll have a look I had a few months off which I was loving didn't really want to go back I was loving it so the prem season since yeah. that I started and I was on holiday watching the games and stuff <laughs> I'd never done that before yeah, so yeah. I was loving it course, yeah. and after a while you, you get bored don't you yeah. I wanted to get back into it and then he said this to Australia and they've got a Scottish manager and He's got the same agency as us or whatever. Yeah. Are you interested? And I was like, yeah. Like, tell me Melbourne and all this. And I was looking into it. I was like, wow. That's gone, this baby. is perfect for me now. I'm just like, not as much pressure. Just yeah. maybe just might be good for my career. And I think it was. It, it helped me a lot. Like, really? Yeah, don't get me wrong. It was hard, like some of the games and that. Because our team was our team was terrible. But I won't go into that. We, we ended up finishing last. In the oh. league, so I've gone there not to fight. Don't get me wrong, they don't have relegation. Yeah, but you've but you didn't finished. want to be near the yeah. bottom. So I've gone to, so they're like the biggest club over there. That mm. Melbourne victory, that was the worst season in history. Couldn't have went anywhere. <laughs> you know I mean? Changed the name, mm -hmm. but I done well. So 
It's one of them, but the team was didn't we we didn't do well as a team, but I, I've done well in games and scored a few good goals, type of thing. I've enjoyed it. But what was it like playing over there? What um, was like the atmosphere like and what was it like mad, living over there? More like a day out for the fans and that, I'd say. Was it? Yeah, yeah. it's not like not like here yeah, where it's like the intensity. Yeah, there, no, yeah. No, and obviously with the heat and that, it's yeah. not as intense. Um, the standard wasn't as good, but yeah. we're obviously playing with some players who aren't as good. So right, it, yeah. I found that hard because you're playing with some lads who aren't as good as yeah. what I was used to. Type yeah, of thing. Of course, you're yeah. trying to coach them through the game. <laughs> yeah, then your head goes when you're doing stuff <laughs> wrong, and yeah. it's just I found it hard and, and, and at times. Um, but I did love the experience, and um, I didn't want to come home to be honest. But then mm. it all changed there, and I've done a year instead of two there, so it's just a year everywhere. So it was a bit. But um, my wife was a bit was a bit homesick anyway. Nice, She's yeah. very close to her family, so I don't think I could have stayed there and lived there forever. But I would have liked to do another year. Yeah. But she was dead homesick, and a new manager come in again, and wanted new players. So it's the time time to go. That's a move. Yeah, mm. I mean, I, I'll. How difficult is it for your wife? Because obviously you just go, oh yeah, I'm, yeah. I play here, you know, oh, I'm going here, you know, because yeah. sometimes you know, no, people are moving. Fair, I don't way. think people realise no. on the outside, they just think, ah, oh, football's wife. But yeah. like even before we had uh, our little girl now, like sh she just used to come wherever I went. So yeah. she, she's moved to Newcastle, she's moved to London for Luton, she's yeah. moved to Australia. <laughs> like, and it, it all happened quick as well. Yeah. It wasn't like, ongoing it was always last minute like the sun the mom was deadline day um so that was mad and then yeah no it is it, it's a lot for them because they've just got to pick their lives up and their family are like i left you know what i mean so and you're going out to you've got yeah. to like because you're training and exactly. you've got matches they, they're at home know, it's and difficult to... they're not i think with what helped it in australia was there was a few english lads who right. like we signed as well okay so yeah. she got on really well with their, their wives and girlfriends yeah, so that yeah. did help yeah yeah um, but she was she was happy to come home. Like oh, so yeah. I wasn't too happy. But... On the phone to the agent. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah probably. Um, Tramia, so Merseyside. Yeah. Uh, Thirty-three games and three goals. Mm. One of my mates is a Tramia fan, and yeah. he said, "Oh, Callum coming in." And he's yeah. like, "But we didn't get the best of him because yeah. our club wasn't very good at the time." Yeah. There is words. No, no, weird, I think so. I got a bit of stick to be fair after the year. So many fans were left. I think they expected a lot more. And rightly so. I think fair enough, do you know what I mean? I don't think it done as well as I could do enough. Have. No, but I don't think anyone did that season because mm. we didn't create anything. We didn't have any shots on goal. Like it was it was mad, like it was hard to score or create anything because we were that. Yeah. What was it? Lack of quality was the, no, the man. Yeah, the good squad, good? I think I think we had a good squad and I got on with the manager again. Um, I got on well with him, but all right with him. But I just think we were too defensive and okay. it was hard for the second players to do well. Our defenders done well, like you had Clarkie, Peter Clark and that. Jay Spearing was there. A lot of experienced lads. Yeah. We had some good players. Um, I think we underachieved that year. I think we could have gotten the playoffs and maybe Nick going up, but we didn't score enough goals. and that That's on me as well, being a winger type of thing, but we we didn't look we didn't ever look like creating anything or it was always off the cuff it was tough to we always had not many shots on goal so yeah that was I probably jumped into that too soon Did to be you? honest because of my wife being homesick yeah and that that's another story that I got back from Oz and then it, after two weeks we usually have a bit longer off two weeks I probably should have took some time out and just waited yeah to see what comes up yeah Sammy you come in. And I thought, because of Australia, going there, I thought I was half right my career off and no one's going to want me in the Championship or League okay, 1. Okay, yeah. So I thought, I'll have to go to League 2. Which if I would have waited, I think I would have got something in a higher league, right, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which would have suited me better, and that, that's another argument. Yeah. It was all in the air, flick-ons, just didn't suit me one bit. Right, yeah. Even though I can fight and battle, I want the ball at my feet and I want to get at people. And the style just didn't suit me one bit. No. Um which is not blaming anyone. That's that's just a fact. I think that's overlooked sometimes. People, yeah. you just look at a footballer and go, well, you go footballer, so she'll just be able to mm. play. But it is, it's key, isn't it? That when yeah. you're going into a club, that you're going into uh, 
a situation yeah. that you can be involved in. You know, the, it's like putting Man City players in and playing the old, you know, the old yeah. Stoke way, Mr. Exactly. Pulis and his white trainees. Shoot them, you know, you know what I mean? so, flick on them, yeah, exactly. It's just, it's just mad, but I always like to think I can find a way. So yeah. that shouldn't. It's not an excuse, but it, it did affect me. Um, mm. But I started the season really well. Mm. Um, scored the win in the first game. And then I thought, right, that's it now, I'll, I'll smash this league, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? And I think the fans had high hopes for me. And yeah. I did myself, to be honest, I wanted to get promoted. And I've never had a promotion. It just, it just obviously didn't wear out, but I, I, I gave me all, I gave it everything. Yeah. And then every time I, I played, I, I gave it everything and whatever. And it just kind of didn't suit me. But um, no, where was it going? I'd gone off track there. What was I saying before that? No, that's what you were saying about Sammy. Yeah. It, it was just one of them. It was the... You know the wrong, sort of like the wrong place yeah. at the wrong but, time. Oh, that's it. I only had two and weeks off. you had two weeks off, yeah. And I've gone straight into it for Mars because yeah. she, she was homesick. It was yeah. perfect for design at home. Obviously, I live in town, so it's 10 minutes away from oh, the training yeah. ground. It was just, it was too comfortable, do you know yeah, what I mean? Okay, yeah. Should have waited and tried to push myself on my comfort zone to move again. To see, yeah. to see who else was interested, whatever. But I, I wanted to live at home and I thought, well, I'd be happy staying here and finish my career here. That was mm -hmm. my plan. I wanted to stay at home, finish my career yeah. here, because obviously she was homesick and we were trying for a baby. Um, so, yeah, in hindsight, again. You have moved about the yeah, north I've, I've, and she's yeah, been no, to you know, know. the Midlands and the yeah, North East and that's Australia. that's why as well I was thinking I, I'm ready to maybe stay at home now because yeah. I'd lived everywhere. And another thing, it was one years all the time. Yeah, it was just not good. So it. it wasn't good for her and... I jumped into it. I, I, I didn't wait long enough. I should have waited to see what else was there. Yeah. Um, but no, I still, I got good memories at the start of the season. The first few months, I say I done well. Mm. Um, and then it just, it just fizzled out a little bit. And we still nearly got in the playoffs, and maybe could have got promoted. You know what yeah. I mean? It, it could have been so different, but no, no hard feelings. It's football. It just didn't work out. And then they say never go back. But I mean, before we get back to it, again. A year with no club, and yeah, I'd seen. I'd, I had seen an interview with you where you said you basically retired. And no, oh, did you? So, what? So, well, you I get to the end ready. of the family. I had me like in my notes already what I was going to say. Really, retiring. yeah, I, I was done, mate. Done, wasn't interested. So, after the family, I think because you stopped of, enjoying it, yeah, I think because I've gone to League Two as well, okay, and not really done well. Oh, mentally, okay, so that's that a personal like, decision of mentally. I was just like. I just stopped enjoying it. I think I'd gone from Melbourne to Tramia, one extreme to do a League Two football, banging it, to Australia in the sun, playing like, do you know what I mean? It was one extreme to the other. Yeah, and I think yeah. once I've come back, I just I just hated it the last few months. I hated I hated it. Okay. And I couldn't wait to retire. Like I planned it. I was like, it wasn't like, oh, you couldn't get a club, so you just stopped playing. I was like, told me agent, I'm done. So now I'll be 31 at this age. Yeah, 31. 30, man, no. 10 years yeah. before you win an FA Cup. So yeah. And you've retired. So yeah, I was just, I was planning it. Like, I was, mm. couldn't wait. Like, I was saying it to my teammates. Like, don't get me wrong, when I was playing, I was I was always on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never tossed a session off, never tossed a game off. But in my head, mentally, I was just like, hated football. I don't know if that was where it was or because I hadn't had the break. I don't know. But I'd, just, I'd done it for so long, since yeah. it was five, six, yeah. non-stop. I'd had enough. It's I'd weird, you enough. know. It's weird because when you're a fan, yeah. you know, I was at Everton, I got released and all that, and mm. you, you, your dream is just to play and all that. But Michael Blanton here, and mm. he was like, by the time I was... Michael was, I don't know, 22, 23, he, wanted to, he was like, I was done. done and yeah. I'm like, oh, he was like, yeah, yeah, but I've been doing it for... Like yeah. 15, 16, 17 years getting yeah. up, going there, there, there. And because he wasn't enjoying it. Yeah. You know, when he did, he walked, he basically walked away at about 26 years yeah. of age. And you're saying a 31. I was there. Yeah. For some fans, that'll be, people will be like, I've just watched Pepe playing for Portugal at 41. 41. Yeah. And you know what I mean? And you're yeah. going, well, he's done it, all of that. But I, I guess when you are moving around and you haven't really maybe in your own mind achieved what you wanted to or got yeah. to the level you know that you yeah, you were, you were capable of the playing. final as well because of yeah. that and I knew I've proved that I can do it against the best and even when I was at West Brom doing it against Chelsea and yeah. 
to then not be doing it enough in League Two. So why? Okay, that takes a toll on you. Well, let's I mean? have a look at you then for that. So, so why then? What do, what do you think? The, if you're capable the, of the, the, winning an FA Cup and being man of the match, yeah. you're capable of tearing Chelsea apart about Pedro and I'm pretty. Did they win the league that season? If they didn't, they won it the next season. Did, yeah. they, they won it within. Did, yeah, they they were there or there yeah. about. They definitely won a league with him because he remember yeah. him scoring a Goodison when they won the league. They won three 0 at Goodison. He scored. The, he scored one of the goals. But you you you've done really well against them. Created two goals. You can obviously do it at the top level. Mm. So why is Callum McManaman have not done it at the top level? Or why have you not got back to that level? Do you think when you you sit here now and you are? You have yeah. got that experience. Oh, you'd have to look at yourself as well. You'd have to look at yourself. Like, um, the penny probably dropped a bit late, and I think that happening, all that happening so soon. Right. It was almost like, how would you get better than that? Okay. Like you, you've smashed it. You know what I mean? Um, Did you lose? You don't see because you don't come across to me as some, and I'm what I haven't seen you play. Never come across to me as a lazy player. No. You never come across to me as someone who goes through the motions no, no. regardless of whether you're playing well or you're not playing well no. and then days happen don't they some days everything comes off other yeah. days not comes off but you never look like a player where you'd go doesn't look interested yeah it doesn't look like uh, speaking to you before listening to everything you've no, answered like yeah football and that. it's not, that's not what bad. i mean it's, I, I don't... think the main fact that it is is the the west brom move not playing for so long okay so i've gone obviously played the first six months started the new season done well against the, in the Chelsea game and then mm. it went sour but then I've gone like two years not lost playing it, properly so if you go from two two years not playing Moves that's going to take a toll on your body and mentally I don't mm. mean like depression wise I mean like believing that you're still good enough yeah. I, I think I had confidence issues then mm. so that's when I think it, it got harder and then some of them moved obviously didn't work out and then it got harder, and then, then you've gone three knock. years of not playing mm. properly. I was played at Sunderland, but in and out, not consistently. Um, I hadn't scored for a while because two of the years I didn't play. Yeah, that's on your mind. Yeah, you're not scored, yeah, yeah. even though it was a winger. The reality is yeah. that you're not so even playing all gets, the time. Yeah, mm. and then I think that's that's a chunk out of my career. Yeah, yeah. talking two, three years in the middle, which is huge. I found isn't that it? hard to get back from, and I think only the Luton is when I went to Luton. Is when I got back from that with Graham cover, Jones. Yeah. That's when I started properly. Don't get me wrong, I'd done all right at Wigan when I went back mm. off the bench. I wasn't starting. Um, and then I went to Luton, but it was Luton mm. that I started to get the confidence back. It right, took yeah. me three, four years to recover from. So that's why I'd say. Because yeah. I suppose it, football moves on that quick, doesn't it? It moves on all the time. You, you take that young car of. Yeah. Without you actually playing every week and yeah. improving yourself tactically, yeah, mentally, yeah. just com- I mean, confidence is huge. Yeah. There's a there's a lot of good football players around, and yeah, you know, I'm I'm guessing you could say to me, you can see this over your career, you will have seen lads in training, and you go, now he's a player. Yeah. Never never can do it in in the games yeah, for definitely. whatever reason it yeah, is. There is a lot. Yeah, so it's like that, that that is belief and, and confidence, isn't it? Yeah, I yeah guess. definitely. And have you had a? Do you think you've suffered a bit of that? Yeah, definitely. And then I was always looking back to that and comparing to that, and that's I, I couldn't get past that. I think it come at the wrong time. time. You, it, a bit, you, yeah. You know, when you look at that, if you'd have had that at like twenty five, yeah, you'd definitely. have probably been totally different. And it? then you you could have got a certain move then. Then you're more like like I was I was dead immature then as well. Like I was still I was still a kid. You know what I mean? Mm. Still had all my mistakes to, to make. Yeah. Like, um, I learned a lot. A lot after that, I learned probably more about myself when I wasn't playing at West Brom. That was the hardest part of my career. As I say, that set me back massively. Um, Do you cope with that better now, with your experience you've got now? If that happened now, I think, saying that, yeah. (laughs) If that happened now, you think what? I think I'd stop again. (laughs) (laughs) Um, No, I don't know. Um, No, having that break, like stopping, was the best thing for me. Okay. In a sense, but yeah. then that that's another thing that was found mad because I'd played footy all my life, then I've gone from, like, I, I retired. Like, so what was your days then? You know, having to be somewhere and train and work hard and get a shower and come home and all that, yeah. and you know what your routines, I've got to do it tomorrow and I've got yeah. to do it tomorrow, I've got a match. What were your routines? 
Oh, and stand, you and stand your cacks laying on a couch watching Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to do with myself. I was because at first I imagined yeah. it would have been all right. Would it? Oh, I just, loved it the just first few months. I was yeah. going away, I was having a pint on a Friday and doing yeah. stuff that I've never done. Yeah. Going to festivals. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is the life, this. You know what I mean? And then when all that stops in the summer, then did you miss your start going? I oh only my started God. missing it. To be fair, it got round Christmas. Whereas I've always said I can't wait for my first Christmas when I retire. Right. Okay. And I started, started like, like I went out Boxing Day, and I've always wanted to go Boxing Day because you've never been. Able can't to. you know what I mean? Watch the footy and have a bet on the racing and that. And I've always looked forward to it. They've always said to me meets and that. And I went out and once I done it, I was like, study. Do you know what I mean? I, yeah. It just felt In like your head because you weren't yeah. able to do it. it and I started to realise and I miss it here. And then I was just like, didn't know what to do myself. I was just lost, like not depressed, but I yeah, was just yeah. like I was bored. Yeah. And then. My missus was like trying to get me back in to playing and that, but at this point I've gone six months, I've done nothing, I haven't wasn't running nothing, um, I wasn't interested. And I was thinking, well, I'm not getting a club now, like that's me, you know what I mean? I'm not even fit. Um, Did so you think about non league fussy? Or did you just um, not? Or were you? Do you know what I mean? Because it will be. Yeah, did you? At yeah. one point, because one of my good mates was the manager of a, a non league club and they right, were doing yeah. well at the time, and he was trying everything to get me in. Um, well, I went to watch one of the games and he tried to sign me after the game. Um, I wasn't sure. I, just, yeah. I don't know. I, I think because of Sammy as well, I'd been like, didn't want to go there and not give him 100%. Okay. Yeah. Even though I gave everything at Sammy, at the end, know, my head was gone. So I didn't end up going. It's a good job I never, to be fair, because then obviously the, the call comes in February, which changed everything. So go on, yeah. man. February, um, you sat so there. February, I'm in the pub with my dad, <laughs> a few pints deep, and then um, on a Friday afternoon. So that was just me. The wee weekend changed. And I mean, you'd never do that now. You, no. you can't because I'd never done it. That's what like, I could, could do it then. Yeah. Anyway, looked at my phone, Sean Maloney. I was like, not a bad little footballer. Oh well, yeah, like um, I spoke to him, and he was saying he wanted me to come in come in and train um, with the reserves and get fit. Uh, we're going to get you a club. Like, not Wigan, we're going to yeah, get you a yeah, club. Yeah. Get you fit, train with the res- reserves for a few weeks. And I was like, I need more than a few weeks. Like, I've done nothing for six months, you know what I mean? And he was just dead casual, like, laughing. He was like, listen, you're too young to retire. Like, you're making a mistake in that. And mm. just when he said that, I was just like, so true, but... How am I coming back from this? Like doing nothing for six months. Where am I gonna go? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, I just I didn't want to go in, but I knew we had to. I've gone home. Missus is pushing me. Mum and dad pushing me. Me mates like, what are you doing? Right, I was like, you? I I didn't want to. Like, but they show me you should do. Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. But I was I didn't want to make a show of myself because I knew how unfit I was and mentally I just switched off. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then everyone's pushing me to go, but I knew we had to take this opportunity just in case, like whatever did get back to Wigan type of thing. You know what I mean? After the, after the first few days, I realised like me touching that, like, I've still got it. I've not lost it. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. I'm unfit, but they know that and they're the working on me. And yeah. the, the fella who was taking the reserves at the time, Stephen Craney, remember him, the left back for Blackpool. Left back, yeah, yeah. So I played with him at Wigan and Blackpool when oh, I went on loan. So we already knew him well. So that helped. I knew yeah. everyone at the club. I knew loads of the first team players. Um, so they just away, feel like home, yeah, basically. So straight away, I was just like, and then I started training. Once I started getting fit, after like a month or two, a few weeks, I was training with the first team then, and even the championship at the time. And I felt confident, like I was training with them. And to be fair, I remember the first session, and I thought I, I, he put me with the first team championship yeah. lads, and I thought. They were struggling at the time, and I felt off it, like confidence wise. Yeah, I couldn't. Whereas usually I'm getting on the ball and going at players, and I, yeah. I, I didn't do too well in that session. I remember thinking after it, I'm off it here. And then I remember like Graham Barrow speaking to me, and he was like, Listen, like you're putting too much pressure on yourself, you're not yeah. going to be straight away the best player. You've not played for how long, like mm. this is just need to get your base, just get fit, and then you'll get a club, we'll get yeah. you a club, whatever. And then I listened to him, got myself fit, and then in training I'm going past these lads and they're on the champ- championship players, you know what I mean? Mm. 
the gaffer pulls me in, in his office um, and he's like uh, we um, we want to sign you for this like this season now in the championship so the the, the time of that off he tried to sign me nice um, so for the last few games yeah. so we're fighting relegation and he was okay. like I want to bring you off the bench and yeah. lift the crowd and do what you can oh, it's, um, anyway it, we missed the deadline so the deadline I didn't even know there was a deadline for the contract players I think it was, I don't know, it was April or March or whatever Yeah. so we were gutted so yeah. I couldn't do it but then I knew then that like, he yeah, wants to sign me in the champ so I was meant to be going somewhere else like, because he was get, to get me fit, yeah. To that was the plan, yeah, to yeah. help my career. Yeah. But once I started proving and training, then I was still, still got it. Yeah. Um. But the, after that, like, I was like, I'm, I'm going all the way. Yeah, I'm getting this contract. And then I just kept going. Didn't have a break that summer. Come back flying and didn't look back. Yeah. And that was that's probably my proudest moment. The contract offer yeah, came. Obviously, the FA Cup thing goes all saying, but to come back from where I was where and get me contact and then have a good yeah. season last year um, is probably my biggest moment. 37 appearances, yeah. two goals. Yeah, should have, should have been more to be fair, but should've. a lot a lot of appearances off the bench. Um, played against that, did you play against Everton last pre-season? Yeah, played the yeah. start of that game. Yeah, yeah Ashley like, Young with the winner, but you know, yeah. he's bad. Eight years older than you, yeah, yeah. about five going. or six years older than you, and look yeah. at how fifty years and yeah, still doing it. So. Well, that's what I mean. Now I've gone the opposite way. So, what I'm mm. saying about um, wanting, wanting to retire, like I planned to retire, I couldn't wait. Mm. I was desperate to stop. Mm. And when I realised that it's not for me, and now I'm like, I'm just going to keep playing as long. You're as a long time retired, mate. Yeah, exactly. You're a long, honest. As a man who's a lot older than you, yeah. I when I stopped playing, just having a game of footy, yeah. Because I, I, the same, I was like playing, and I, anyway, whatever. But I'd stop playing, and then I think back and think, why did it, why, why yeah. did it stop? Because you can never get it back, mate. So while you're fun. fit and playing well, yeah, and doing well, Definitely. don't don't you know you don't need but me then to tell you all the side, you tell you. If but, it did carry on, I wouldn't have ended up at Wigan now, and now yeah. I haven't been this happy playing now for years. That's what I was gonna say. So but you've it had worked the, out the yeah. best it could have, even yeah. though it was. A tough role to get there. Do you know what I mean? No, actually, hey, listen. Exactly what you, you've what mm. you've done is you've had, you've made a deal, a decision that you. A lot of I I think probably a lot of people would have just stuck, carrying on playing because you you were a young you're a young man yeah. still and and on football teams but you still had a few. I mean players are still. We just been talking about forty one year old playing Ronaldo yeah. was about you know, nearly forty and he's playing so yeah. lads are playing till the mid thirties yeah. now. You're the the early part yeah. of that going, I'm done. Mm. I think a lot of people might have just hung on, performing, performing, yeah. less getting worse it's and worse I've and worse. Like but you've had that back, refresh, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. Now and you've, you've reset. And you know what? In a way, you might actually produce the best couple of years because yeah. simply because you've, it's almost like, this sounds crazy to say, mm. but you had the FA Cup winning the Premier League moves and all that. And you're tailing off for yourself because mm. you're thinking I should be at that level. And you've had that time off where now yeah. you're coming back on. I need to try and get as good enough to play in League yeah. One again, which you've just absolutely. So now, smashed. now my mentality is, um, I could be retired now. So every session, everything I'm doing you're now, enjoying, isn't it? I'm not that I was ever not, no, but now there's just an extra. I can't explain it, but obviously the connection I've got with the fans and the club is like special. That's like it probably couldn't have worked out any better going back um, like what the club's done for me like don't get me wrong I know I've done well for them but like what what the club and the fans have done for me is has definitely helped the situation and uh, I, when I signed I was getting like a lot of a lot of people were doubting me you know what I mean like even yeah. the fans that love me yeah which is fair mm. if someone signed for Everton now and they just had a year off yeah would you be doubting them <laughs> oh, I was I would and I was Doubt myself. Mm. That was the hardest thing to get past. But... Football fans are fickle, mate. Yeah, because hey. it's because it's emotional as well. Yeah. Isn't it? You, you, and we always have said this to yeah. you know, sat opposite a few now and said that yeah. when you go in and sit down in that seat, I'm sure you've done it watching Evan. You yeah. expect that person to be perfect every mm. time they pull that shirt on, and mm. no one knows what's going on in your life. Yeah. No one knows how you're feeling mentally or. If there's, you've got to sit, you know, we've, we've seen it last season, like Dwight McNeil say, he had a lot of stuff going off off the pitch that no one knew about till 
till Christmas yeah. with his with his partner. She was really ill, and yet you're seeing him not playing as well, and it's like, yeah. oh no, he's not good, or whatever. And that you'll see but that he still right never stopped football, going, did he? He never playing, touched anything off, and, that, and that's what you've got to look at as well. Like see. everyone can have quiet games or mm-hmm. not perform as good, but mm-hmm. I think it's when people people when people aren't you think they're not giving you it all. I think that's when fans come for people. Yeah. I know no one can ever say that. No, I was going to say that at any club. I know that. The... I mean, what is it like being a footballer then? Because you did have a year, like, sort of yeah. a year off not being a footballer. So what is it like? Because us as fans can never imagine what it's like for you, you know, get up, yeah. go to train and got to perform. What's it like um, running out in front of that crowd knowing that you know you're saying you... some are doubting you? Yeah. So for you, how do you cope with that? Because um, I'm sure I, you're just part it, of it, it just made me want to prove people wrong that yeah that just gave me the boost especially like the fans that i knew loved me were saying it it was like but i was thinking it myself as well right. so i did have that you do have them doubts and you do have them thoughts you know what i mean i can't lie um but then that just made it even better that the season they had like i know i only scored twice but there were two winners and um i was involved in a lot of big wins played in both the derby wins against bolton starting both of them and all the big games he put me in and trusted me you know what i mean and, mm. and i produced and in some ways last season was one of my most enjoyable seasons because i was coming back from that and getting back to wigan which i thought i'd never do and now me me hope is to finish my career it there that's what i'd love to do mm. obviously i need to keep performing for that to happen but that would be the perfect end you know what i mean to yeah. come through at wigan and everything they done for me when um I got released from Everton to then finish my career there would be just but yeah what's it like being a footballer sorry you went off then no no I'd say like it can be the best job in the world and it Mm -hmm. can also be very hard um but like at the moment I'm loving it like it just if you if you're playing every week you've got to love it surely I just don't get how you you know what I mean if you're not but if you're not then it's people gonna find it hard, you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. it's how you deal with that though and how yeah. you come back from that. Um, but no, I'm loving it at the moment and hopefully it carries on. What's what's next then for Callum McMahon when we've you know, you've you've had that time away from the game. Yeah. So do you think I when don't the time now? <laughs> I know that's what I, I mean. So stop now. so when the day comes when you think Yeah. All right, you know, I'm not doing what I feel comfortable with now. As yeah. in terms of, I can't do it to the level I'm happy with myself. Mm. Do you think you'll go into coaching? We think, no. you'll, do you not? No. So this is the thing that's still coming up now. I don't, I don't know. Okay. I don't, I don't fancy being a coach. Okay. Um, I don't fancy like, I don't know, the speaking in front of everyone and the meetings and I don't know. It doesn't appeal to me. I love football, no. so I yeah. want to stay in the game. Yeah. I'd love to stay. Yeah. What about you? Like, what about youth coach or something like that, or do you, or what else? What other routes have you thought yeah, about? I know you're still very much a footballer, so it's yeah. you focused on that. But have you had any in the moments when you? Not really. No. I mean, that might change in a few years. I might want yeah. to be a coach in a few years. I don't know. Mm. Like, I still, I still think I've got a few years left. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I've. I'm not trying to retire you. Yeah, yet, by no. the way, I'm just saying. No, no, you know, no. When I know you think what about next hour, but you do have to think about it. And, yeah. and I never thought about it. Tell you the truth, and yeah. a lot of players said to me like, "You need a plan," mm. and. I didn't listen, I wasn't bothered. I thought I'd be fine. I thought I'd just enjoy my weekends and go for a pint with my dad and whatever, but no, it's, it, it just got boring after a few months. And well, that's what I mean. That's that's. I guess that's where, where the, the question's coming from, is that yeah. hearing you actually say, if you'd have sat there and gone, I loved it, great, you know, PlayStation, yeah. on, nah. or go for a pint with my dad. First few months I did. I loved it. Yeah. And then, as it. I say, I started missing it. And you, you, I think... I think I didn't realize it, but I think you missed like like the atmosphere, yeah. Like the crowd, it sounds stupid, but you you can't ever replicate that in anything no. else in life. So that that buzz, mm. don't get me wrong, I get nervous before games, but that that buzz, you you can't you can't get that back. Mm. And that's what I realized that I missed the most when I come back. I was like, wow, I've missed that. that. Was it? Yeah. Like, you can't ever get, you can never get that buzz back. Mm. Do you think you'd have been able to put your finger on that when you were retired, what you were missing? And it's only when, or it was it only when no, you I come back and then the you because I always say, um, no, no, I remember that like thinking this is it, yeah, because yeah. I remember thinking, like I've missed that, yeah, that buzz, like that winning feeling with the lads and the atmosphere. You can't ever get that back, like 
when you're on the pitch. Like, don't you know, you can go to match and that, but it's not. When it's you, it's just, I can't explain it. You, you can't get it back. And, and I think that's what I miss the most without knowing. You know what I mean? Mm. What would Callum McManaman sat opposite me now say to Callum McManaman when he just come off the pitch after that Portsmouth game? Having made his debut as a eighteen year old. Oof, that's what that's what advice one. could you could you give? Or even at the FA Cup final, back when you're younger, knowing what you you know now. Don't of... get too high, don't get too low. Just gotta to try and stay level. Yeah. It's easier said than done, but don't get me wrong, you've gotta enjoy when you do well because it's hard. Mm. You know what I mean? You've gotta enjoy it, but as in I just say don't get too high, don't get too low. That's what I'd say, yeah. Because I've gone the other way as well, where I've took it hard and I've doubted myself too much, and mm. I'm very self-critical. So I'll I'll look at myself a lot um, when I don't think I've done enough and done well. I'm my biggest um, critic type of thing. So I'm too hard on myself as well. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so when I was younger, I'd probably get too high okay. um but then on to the opposite i'd get too low as well so now i just kind of try and keep it but you that all comes with experience you know what i mean and that's what i say to the younger lads now it's easy saying it but um yeah that's what i'm trying to pass on to the younger lads now and you don't fancy coaching no, not <laughs> no. fair enough yeah. fair enough listen thank you very much Thanks for coming in. Yes, Thanks for Enjoyed it. being open. Thanks for having a good yeah. chat. You do. F- it still feels to me like you you're still playing down what you've achieved. You have obviously yeah. you've had a lot of experiences. You've had a great day at Wembley, mm. but I think you're right. I think to to go on the journey that you've gone on mm. to basically say that's it. I'm done. I'm yeah. finished. And then to be able to come back and get yourself back in and yeah. and after the season you've done and you've obviously done very well because you've got another contract that yeah. they're going to be looking forward to going back in the pre-season training mm-hmm. which starts I think that's a huge achievement in terms of being able to switch it back and if you feel like you're getting back to those levels and enjoying it yeah. then that should be something you're immensely proud of because No it is it, as yeah. I say it's my proudest memory obviously that the cup thing is obviously hard and whatever and be biggest achievement but coming back from um not playing for a year and then proving a lot of people wrong and myself and then obviously with my daughter being born as well she was at my first game that i scored in i come on and got the winner oh like that day is better than the final for me that'll never be beaten mm. like it's not even close like seeing them waving in the crowd to me after the game coming off the pitch like that that means more to me like than the final you know what i mean which is i know it sounds mad but it's to come back from not playing Finally, and yeah. then have your daughter at the game scoring it's the winning the first game she came do you know what I mean it, it just you couldn't write it so yeah yeah that's what I'm proud of yeah Callum good luck good luck for the season let's see Thank more you. goals nice one. two yeah. two isn't enough I, know, I, need a few I want at least season. double that yeah. this season right. keep it going and uh, yeah. it was lovely to see you thanks so very much right.